package some Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Let's talk about Ultimate Adventures. This is not Batman and Robin? That is not Batman and Robin. That's a Marvel book, my friend. That really threw me off. It's meant to. <laughs> we can't talk about Ultimate Adventures without also talking about the Marvel You Decide stunt, but we've already talked about the Marvel You Decide stunt through the lens of Marvel, which I still maintain may be one of the worst comic books ever made. Fair. It comes Maybe. from nothing. Yeah, no, yeah. It is. I know, because there's all, there's like self-published vanity projects. Yeah. But then again, so was that, but it yeah. used Marvel <laughs> to do it. It was 100% self-published. So yeah, no, you know what? It sucks. It's the worst. <laughs> It's it's the worst offender we've ever had on the couch. It's certainly one of the worst. Easily. You said maybe top. one of the worst. No, no, no it definitely is. is one of the worst. Top three. Top three worst there comics ever made. Mainstream comics ever made. Mm -hmm. Let's put that asterisk in there. Right, right, right. But, uh, but there's two other offenders in the Marvel You Decide controversy, and that includes Peter oh, David's no. Captain Marvel and <sighs> Ultimate Adventures. God no. damn it. Oh, I forgot no. about this. Now, we no. talked about no. Ultimate Adventures on our sister show, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, which is over on another channel, but we covered the first issue to kind of look at those. See, we already did this. We can't be any, Ethan, we can't be here on the couch. We've already done this. But well, we didn't do the I last don't, don't five other all. issues. Well, I, I, it, so I'm I know you don't. We've talked about the you decide, but we're going to talk about it again because we have <laughs> to. Because it matters. So get the visual aid, Ethan. <sighs> That's right. You have been tasked. We have the poster. <laughs> they made a poster of the, of the most ill-advised thing that Marvel's ever done in the history of the company. And that includes the new universe. <laughs> I have nice. this up in the office to remind me that this exists. <laughs> that this could always happen. And to prove if they ever like use the Disney lawyers to expunge it, you can't get rid of this. It's in my possession. <laughs> you made this. So proud and so high and mighty were they. In the early days of the Joe Quesada, Bill Jemis, Marvel Renaissance, Bill Jemis and Joe Quesada were changing the game and also behaving like children and <laughs> taking just a, a, a brand new approach to the whole professionalism angle in comics. So what happened As was- As in un? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> because Bill Jemis essentially took to the message boards and talked about how there are a bunch of books at Marvel that were selling like crap. And so they were going to have to increase the prices on those books. This included stuff like Spider-Girl and Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. And nothing to drive sales down to, further. That's right. Yeah, nothing makes people want to buy something more. Like making it. Than taking the same quality and just charging more for it. That's right, yeah. A fan in Bill Jemis's complaint suggested, well, why don't you just charge an extra 25 cents for these books? And Bill Jemis is like, great idea, random guy on the internet. That's what I'm going to do. And so Peter David was like, am I going nuts? Because I'm a professional and I thought this was supposed to be like a conversation we would have behind closed doors, but you're having it on a message board <laughs> with randos taking advice from people on the internet. Oh, this isn't a rando. This is a fan of mine. This is Nutsuck69. <laughs> and we can consider this a focus group. Right. And look at the karma he has. Look at how many stars are beneath <laughs> his username. I mean, all he had to do was you know, travel 10 years into the future, 15 years, and that's just like how companies operate now. Oh yeah, yeah, no. It's like, what does Twitter say? <laughs> yeah. So Peter David took to his blog and was like, oh, um, I'm sorry, so since we're airing our dirty laundry, here's what I have to say about that. And wrote yeah. like a huge blog post about how much horseshit that was. And then went on to make an, a, a counter offer where essentially he said, why don't you charge more for the best selling books since they're gonna sell no matter what? And why don't you lower the price of the poorer selling books and I'll, I'll do you one better. How about you pay me like 20 bucks an issue? Like I will take a financial hit as I already am because I'm an author working for Marvel and I will prove to you that this book has fans. Mm. And it turns out that like Bill Jim has had a bias against the book anyway because the book was also steeped in continuity and it made like a lot of references to books that also didn't sell or mm -hmm. that Bill Jim has had nothing but disdain for anyway. As, as Bill Jim has put it, those books were selling DC numbers because they couldn't help themselves. <laughs> and every conversation they had to be like, this book sucks. And also that company sucks, don't forget about that. And it's like, dude. 
so then Joe Quesada gets involved and it's and it gets even more ugly and the, it becomes this like flame war between Peter David and Joe oh Quesada, God, that's the awesome. editor in chief of Marvel Comics and one of Marvel Comics' most storied authors. And they're just like for weeks they're just complaining at each other on the internet until finally they like called each other on the phone and worked oh, it like out. Oh, like adults. Yeah, he used to also get into like open arguments with people who were movers and shakers in the industry. I cite his infamous debate with Todd McFarlane. Uh, <laughs> and Todd McFarlane's <laughs> rebuttal, which was to make Peter David a Klansman in his Spawn comic. <laughs> Total professionalism across the board. I mean, that's pretty great. Right? It's like, well, I'm an artist and you're not. Joe Quesada pitches the You Decide event, where he's like, all right, well, let's just turn it into a big dog and pony show, because that's how- it's, We Joe, already are in there. Well, we're Marvel. And it's run by Joe Quesada, so it always is going to be a dog and pony. It's always going to be like a WWF, like... <laughs> He's going to go cut a promo. That's exactly right. He's yeah. like, ooh, this Sunday night, I'm going to be wrestling Peter David. <laughs> I'm calling you out. That's exactly what they would do. <laughs> and Peter David was like, I thought we were kind of over with this, like with Todd, <laughs> but like, I guess not. And so to keep everything fair, the idea was that Joe was going to edit a book using one of his star writers, Ron Zimmerman, and that was Ultimate Adventures. And Peter David would keep making Captain Marvel, but we're gonna reset it to a number one, keep everything fair, and at the end of six months, we'll see who comes out on top. And so Joe Quesada, if he loses, he gets a pie in the face. <laughs> and Peter David, if he loses, he gets fired. What? I mean, because he would be, because in right. six well, months, if his book doesn't sell, it's going right. to get canceled anyway. Your book's trash. You're going to be fired anyway. Well, because also, <laughs> Peter David's argument was like, the fact that you said the book was selling poorly, and then the fact that you said you were going to increase the price in the book, tells retailers and readers that the book is not worth investing not to in, buy because it. now it's over. Yeah. Like, why would I buy a book I know is going to get canceled? So you've yeah. already ruined the book. Right. It's already over. Yeah. So Peter David's like, I actually like tried to morph the book into what you people are doing over there. <laughs> Like, he did a four-part story arc where Captain Marvel goes into the future and meets Spider-Man 2099, but no huh. one at marketing promoted the book, so nobody even knew that happened. It's like, why did I even do that? Right! He's like, why did I even play ball? You're not going to promote it. And you, you put money into marketing the books that sell automatically. Right. Like, they don't need to market it. They don't need it. Why are you spending money on that regard? Of course, what Peter David wouldn't know is that in the future of Marvel, nothing gets marketed. <laughs> But you know that's a good point. Why yeah. are we spending money, Why are we spending money on yeah. marketing when when all these creators have Twitter accounts? No, no, no. That's the worst. That's not what I meant. Yeah. Uh, what was Bill Jemis? What did he have on the table? So Bill Jemis like, and I'll write a book too. And essentially, oh, Bill, no. Because uh, uh, and Bill Jemis was actually kind of a prophet of his time because uh, it, imagine if you will a future where vastly uncreative people have nothing but utter resentment for artistic people, and then they used like whatever's at their disposal to try and invalidate what they do with something that's just a crappy imitation of it. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm actually kind of genuinely surprised there isn't like an entire series made by Bill Jemis huh. using only machine learning. <laughs> so anyway, this is all to get to Ultimate Adventures, but mm -hmm. right. right out of the gate, Captain Marvel number one beats the sales for both books. Yeah, obviously. Immediately. First of all, it's a number one. But it had like 56,000 copies sold. You know, And it's a book that people have heard before. Yeah, well people already they, they were fans it of it. They yeah. were already a built-in audience and then there were new people that heard about it thanks in large part to this asinine you decide event. Right. So it is kind of working, but not for everybody else. Like all the Ultimate books at the time were selling like 100,000 units. Uh, this one sold the first issue 36,000. Mm. Because they were like, what, what am I looking at? <laughs> what is this? What is Who are this? these characters? What is this? Yeah. So that happens. Marvel also sells similarly bad numbers. And of course, Bill Jemis' approach to like selling comics is to talk down to or invalidate his audience. Like he thinks that everyone who reads comic books, uh, or at least is a large shock? percentage of it, is a, ch is a man child who lives in their basement. Like he literally is quoted in saying things like, for many of our readers, their Friday night date is Electra. <laughs> Like in the latest issue of a comic that she appears in. Right. And I'm like... I'm not saying that's bad. Right. No, you know, no. But it is, is true. I'm saying it's pathetic is what I'm saying. Yeah. It's not, I mean, it's not bad. It's just yeah. sad. I'm just saying they have yeah. no life. Right. It'd be yeah. like a drug dealer being like, these losers who come to my house and buy my drugs. Yeah. What a bunch of morons. <laughs> You're selling them the drugs. Yeah. yeah but I'm I mean, that is what drug it. dealers are like. I'm I mean, sure. Yeah, I right, totally. They don't have any respect for their clientele. No. What is large, the ultimate line? That's 
Ultimate's, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh, the Ultimate, Ultimate Universe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is in the Ultimate Universe? Yes. Okay, I thought it just had the name Ultimate no. on it. Oh, okay. No, and that's what's so baffling is because oh, there was what? there was very little explanation or promotion for this outside of it being part of the, like, let's get one over on Peter David adventure. And it's like, that's no one's, no one's on your side. But <laughs> the other thing about it, there's another elephant in the room when it comes to the You Decide and Ultimate Adventures, and that's Ron Zimmerman himself, the creator of Ultimate Adventures. Mm -hmm. Who's and just caught up in this? It, well, was he gonna write this book anyway? Like what? Okay, so the problem is, <laughs> when Joe Quesada comes into Marvel, he also helps to kick in the door and bring in creators like Brian Michael Bendis, Babylon 5 creator J. Michael Straczynski, <laughs> Joss Whedon, and Kevin Smith. Mm. And these were also risks. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know they if their talents would translate to comics. Necessarily have history, publishing, writing comics. And Kevin Smith himself, like specifically Kevin, who had no previous experience writing comic books, but did have experience reading them and writing movies that referenced comics. Mm -hmm. He needed the most wrangling because obviously, you know, he's a little long-winded and yeah. his dialogue tends to go on and it doesn't really necessarily, tra it translates great to the screen, but it <laughs> doesn't necessarily translate to the page. Right. And so, he needed help with editing and uh, and just kind of like shortening brevity, mm -hmm. and uh, but but he did succeed. Right. And the books sold as well. His yeah. name cachet really helped as well. Uh, Ron Zimmerman also came from TV and movies, and was a prolific personality on the Howard Stern Show. Oh. And clearly, what happened was Joe Casada was a big fan of Ron Zimmerman, and so as far as Joe Casada is concerned. Ron Zimmerman is just as good a get as Kevin Smith or Joss Whedon. Which, of course, as we all know, in the future, is not accurate. <laughs> so Joe Quesada is like way in on Ron Zimmerman. And he's already trying to make him into a commodity like onto a Whedon or a Kevin Smith. And so Ron Zimmerman is working on books like backups for Spider-Man. And the audience is not having it. They are not fans uh -oh. of Ron Zimmerman's take on anything. I mean, the only way that this works is if Ron Zimmerman is Great. doing a parody. Oh, sure, yeah. Well, and that's the thing is that Ron Zimmerman essentially is a comedy writer. Mm -hmm. So his specialty is going to be in that genre. Right. And it doesn't necessarily lend itself to big two comics. Yeah, but so... So just give Kevin him a comedy Smith. book. Yeah, but Kevin Smith's also Yeah, but there comedy. is still drama. You know, like True. Chasing Amy, Dogma, yeah, yeah, even yeah. Clerks. Like, there's there's some there's kind of in there, stakes yeah. in there. Yeah. Ron Zimmerman is brought in, and the the audience is not having it, and they're taking to the internet to complain about it. Mm. And infamously, Ron Zimmerman jumped into the fray to defend himself against oh. this malignment. He was just yeah, like, like, "How dare would. you, you basement dwelling losers!" You know, like just really getting into it. Uh. And then they were like, "Oh no! Now Ron Zimmerman is validating us. So let's really lay into him." Yep. And then Joe Casada shows up. And he's like, "How dare you? Like Ron Zimmerman's great. You know, he we're gonna get you too, Casada." <laughs> What's funny is like it's it's super tragic because. It's not enough that like Joe Quesada thinks that Ron Zimmerman is just as good a get as John Sweden, Kevin right. Smith, and Brian Michael Bendis. But people are comparing Ron Zimmerman to Kevin Smith in these message boards, and Joe Quesada starts dragging Kevin Smith by being like, if Kevin Smith didn't have the name recognition, you people wouldn't be able to tell the difference. You're like, Kevin Smith and his keyboard warriors are defending him, but uh, you would have just the same problem with him as you do with Ron. Like, it was just like, right. dude! They're, they're virtually indistinguished. As far as Joe Quesada is concerned, he's like, I've got something to prove with my, like, Ron Zimmerman love. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna rope him into my You Decide spat uh, with Peter David and have him do Ultimate Adventures. Which, I should warn you, is a completely original story featuring only original characters. Mm-hmm barring some cameos here or there. But the entire ultimate line was like, here's the X-Men, but new. Here's Spider-Man, but new. Here's the Avengers, but new. And also this Batman Robin parody idea that also is super real and serious and in the Ultimate Universe. <laughs> right, they could show up. They could show up. In Spider-Man, Ultimate Spider-Man. And they Spider literally have never shown up ever again. Because no one wants to touch them. <laughs> I, I don't even know, I, don't, I think it's more like nobody knows that this even exists. Like the because the sales started at 35, 36,000 for the first issue. As you can imagine, six issues later, it was 
doing worse than DC numbers, I'll tell you that. Like it was, <laughs> and horrible delays. Book took oh, almost two years to get oh, six issues. No. Captain Marvel, the book that it was fighting against, uh -huh. hit issue 19 by the time issue six came out. <laughs> <laughs> The difference between a professional comic book creator yeah, and, and uh, these jokers right, and, and, and who do not do that. No. I no. mean, Zimmerman, I guess, became one, well, but he wasn't. Zimmerman had at least some experience, unlike Bill Jemis. Like, Bill Jemis right. is, is the room of comics. Right. It's like, first and last time. Zimmerman had done other books, and they were awful. Mm. You're like, telling me the Rawhide Kid was not good? Dude, the Rawhide Kid was not good. One of the most unfortunate casualties of this was the artist Duncan Figredo, because he didn't even know about the Unicide thing. So as far as <laughs> he was concerned, he got an assignment. Right. And he was warned by Casada, like, hey, listen, because Figredo worked with Kevin Smith okay. on a book called Chasing Dogma, which was like <laughs> a stopgap between Chasing Amy and Dogma. It was like a whole Jay and Silent Bob adventure that Kevin Smith would mostly cannibalize into the movie Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Oh, okay. That's fun. Yeah, it's, it's actually a really fun story and it looks great because Figredo does most of the art and it looks dope. So Is the you, art like this? It looks exactly, no. No, this, the covers are done, most of the covers I believe are done by Kare Andrews. And the cover that looks more like a Batman the Animated Series parody is also by Kari Andrews, but looks nothing like any of the other covers, and also looks unfinished and terrible. Mm -hmm. This cover is not representative of what the book looks like. I was gonna say, because if this was the no. art for the Chasing Dogma book, right. it really reminds me of, of, of Clark's Cartoon Show. Clark's Cartoon Show. Yeah, no, no, the Chasing Dogma book looks like this. It looks like... Kind of hyper-realistic. Hyper-real. Yeah. And it's fun, it's actually a really- This looks great. It does, it does look great. Yeah. And I feel really bad because Fergredo's also warned by Joe Quesada, he was like, listen, Ron Zimmerman's a lot like Kevin Smith. So you're gonna have to like work mm. through all of the dialogue and Zimmerman you have to leave made a lot of space in your panels. Well, and <laughs> you're gonna have to like break up some things. Like he had mm. cause and effect actions in the same panel, and it's just like it was never gonna happen. It was just, right. it's first, just not how it works, just, man. Just, just entry level mistakes. Yeah. And of course, one of the conceits of the Udicide thing is that Joe Quesada is in this, he's editing Ultimate Adventure. This is his baby. Right. He didn't edit a single issue, allegedly, right. because for, as far as Pergredo was concerned- I thought that was the whole thing. He's like, I'm gonna get someone to do this. I'm gonna edit it. Yeah, but he was also like editor-in-chief of Marvel and he had run that ship too. So like, yeah, as far like, as- Oh, never mind, I don't have time Oh, I, I, I trust Ron Zimmerman. I have so much faith in Ron Zimmerman. Yeah. As editor, I make the decision as to, to who the writer is. Him. Yeah, and uh, there you go. That was my contribution, was yeah. not getting in his way. Right. That is, that is a style of editing. Yeah, yeah. and Fagredo was such a pro that he was like, he would make changes and he would make suggestions. And But, but he he is credited as, I'm paraphrasing, but he was like, it was the worst experience of my career, making this book. It was the worst of yeah. times, it was the worst of times. <laughs> it was just the worst, everything's the worst. So, Ultimate Adventures, if you divorce it from everything, is just this confounding blip on Marvel's timeline. Mm. Just it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> but knowing that it's part of this contest that it handily lost, you know, that, that kind of adds some depth or at least some context to it where you're like, oh, at least I understand where it came, but I still don't know why you did this. Like, I get why you thought that this might sell because of course, as was the case with Marvel, Bill Jemis was clearly, you know, he, he dragged DC constantly throughout that book. Yeah. Clearly was resentful and jealous. Like it was nothing yeah. but like an ex lover who was just like, oh no, I hate them. I especially hate them when I'm jerking off outside their window. <laughs> like, So wait a minute, this is also like Fuck DC. This is definitely- Why is there so much Fuck DC happening at Marvel? Well, because Marvel. Because Two Joe Quesada used to work for DC. You decide it, books, have that as an element. Yeah, because Joe Quesada used to work for DC okay. and he hates Paul Levitz and he doesn't want to and he, and he wants to make fun of them. And right. also, surprise, surprise, the two books that failed were the fuck DC books. Um, yeah. Yeah, because they're the two books where they have a weird ax to grind instead of just telling a good story. Right, which, uh, of course, Peter yeah. David did. Right. And, by the way, incidentally, the You Decide thing, like, because of the relaunch and because of, like, the whole approach to, like, make Captain Marvel win, like, Captain Marvel actually ended up being a better book. <laughs> like, mm. Peter David made the Captain Marvel comic better. And so it made more fans 
The book did get canceled. Right. And they did the raise the price. What? Like the book was actually being argued as adding 25 cents to make it 275. By the by the end of the book it was sold for 299. Oh my god. So like everyone lost. And Peter David looked bad because, you know, he engaged the trolls yeah, he online. Got, he and he got caught up in it. Yeah. Wow. I can't believe that he won the contest. And at, still lost. Yeah, we're still going to raise the price, though. Oh, yeah. Joe How Pisano, degrading. It's horribly degrading. <laughs> Horrific. But the worst is everyone was right. The Judicide thing did help Captain Marvel yeah. sell better. Raising the price was inevitable, and everyone was going to do it anyway. Mm. Making the changes to Captain Marvel were necessary. Marvel and Ultimate Avengers was not. <laughs> oh, the other thing is that uh, Bill Jemis was going to be put into a dunk tank at uh, right. Wizard World Chicago. If uh, lost. We're going to hit Joe Quesada in the face of the pie. We were going to dunk Bill Jemis in a dunk tank. And Peter David was going to have to live with the failure if he lost. Ah, uh, so and he wasn't going to be fired. He was going to lose his book. The book was going to well, be canceled. The book that was exactly get... what was going to happen. Right. Six months later. Which it did. Which, it, which of course, it did, but not until... But not until two years Long later, after these long, books yeah, got canceled. Yeah. Okay. But the other thing is, none of those things happened. There was no dunk tank. There was no yeah. pie in the face. No yeah. one did anything. Wizard World Chicago 2003 came and went. <laughs> and, and, and Captain Marvel just kept on plugging along. And also, there were these confusing books that came out. People went, oh my God. Remember that horrible book, Marvel? <laughs> I can't believe they went back on I know. the agreement. That's not cool. I know. I, I agree. Like, oh, well, then who remembers that, that you decide thing anyway? It's like, you, you made posters. You made posters of it. <laughs> you tell me that was for nothing? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was all just a big troll. Yep. I say, get Bill Jemis and Joe Quesada on a stage at San Diego Comic-Con. Pie one in the face. And hit him one in no, the face. No, both of them get pies in the face. <laughs> Having been hit in the face with a pie, I could tell you... That between the two of them, I take the dunk tank. Really? That's kind of fun. You're a little mm. wet. Oh no. Yeah, that's true. The pie, you got to clean up. You what get about some crevices in your face? Forget it. They should be hit in the face with a pie and then dunked. Agreed. Yes. Just that way it washes it off. Yes. Yes. That's fine. That's fair. Yeah. 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 That's it. No, they should be torn and feathered. <laughs> I mean, certainly the internet called for worse. So Ultimate Adventures is essentially the story of a young impudent whelp named Hank Kippel, who was an orphan in a disaffected Chicago orphanage. And he is the brattiest protagonist you will ever see. I think that if you took all of his dialogue and put it into a charismatic actor, you suddenly would get a character you want to read about. As it stands, because of the editing and the truncation of his dialogue and everything, all you get is the distilled douchebaggery of <laughs> Hank Kippel, and he is frustrating as hell to read about. I will say that as this does technically follow narrative convention, you do end up sympathizing with and rooting for Hank hmm. towards the end. But <laughs> it is a it's slog, a and especially when you're trying to convince the whole of your audience to read this book, essentially out of spite, <laughs> Maybe it was a weird move to make your protagonist a piece of shit. <laughs> so had this been cast back in that time... Right, if they had made an alternate adventures show or movie, that would have been fun. Now, unfortunately, it's too late for that. Yes. Because this was in 2002, oh, yeah. you said? Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan Taylor Thomas would have oh, knocked man, that yeah. out of the park. Easily, yes. If, if this book was 10 years earlier, that yeah. would have been great. I would have been, yes, all yeah. up on 92 this. or 93, Totally. Boom, Jonathan Taylor Thomas would have nailed it. No question. Oh, he also has, like, incredible prowess. You know, like, he's agile, and he's strong, and he's technologically savvy. Like, he rigs the lighting system in the sleeping quarters to respond only to his own clapping. You know, like, he has a clapper involved, but it's only his own. Yeah. I'm like, what What frequency? No. But regardless, he's he's a pain in the butt. But Father Joe... The By the way, that's not a clapper. He claps, and some kid in the hallway turns the lights on and off. Oh, yeah, naturally. he is. He's just paying a kid. Yeah, five bucks. So, the headmaster, Father Joe, thinks he's adorable. Like, he's just like, yeah, whatever. This kid's great. Ah, oh, boy, a little bit Yeah, exactly. But Ugh. don't bag on God or you'll be writing on the chalkboard like Bart Simpson and of course he does mm. uh, much to the delight of Sister Mary who is like the overseeing nun who has no patience for Hank and I guess she's supposed to be our ride-along character for as long as it takes because you don't like him either when you're reading it he's just he's frustrating and 
not fun. Is he supposed to be like a Dennis the Menace or? I, I mean. I'm trying to think of like characters from history. Yeah. That he's, could serve as archetypes for It's weird. He, he is just, character. he's just like a douchey kid. He's, he's had a hard life. Obviously he's the oldest kid in the orphanage. Like yeah. he's been passed over. So you're supposed to sympathize with him. You're supposed to sympathize him. with him and you're supposed to understand like this kid is angry for a reason. One night, it's lights out and Jay and Silent Bob, I'm sorry, I mean these two criminals who look exactly like Jay and Silent Bob <laughs> uh, break into the orphanage. They've just pulled off a robbery and they're looking, they, I guess they just thought, oh, a church, this will be empty. And instead they found an orphanage by accident and they're in there and they accidentally wake up Hank, who I don't even think was asleep. He was just awake because he's like literally eight years older than all the other kids. And he's immediately smarmy and sarcastic to them and they're like Jesus Christ like shut up kid like we're you know we're we're adult men I, who have guns like I, I can broke kill in you. here yeah, exactly I'm a bad person right and he's like but I'm a fictional character who knows he's in a comic book he's not quite Deadpool right you're like, not gonna kill me I guess it, or the kid really does want to die <laughs> <laughs> he's just that depressed right but uh, you know so they, they they pull their guns on him and they give him a hard time and then you know one of these kids uh, wakes up and sees adult men in the room and starts crying and screaming his head off and then mm. Hawk Owl shows up, our Batman protagonist. Now, Hawk Owl is the- Hawk Owl. Hawk Owl. Two flying creatures merged into one. Yes, now I thought, <laughs> oh, it's two birds. What a crowded and unnecessary, dumb, obvious parody character. It's uh -huh. not two birds? But there is a hawk owl. Like there's an owl what? called the hawk owl. But at the end, we find out the origin for Jack Danner, AKA hawk owl, and it is two birds. <laughs> so it's just a coincidence I that think they picked. That Zimmerman didn't know there was a hawk owl bird right. and wanted it to be hawk owl. And so he had him literally fight as a child, a hawk and an owl, and then his mentor picks that as his totem. Maybe you're not giving enough credit. Maybe he like knew the hawk owl was a thing and he's like, wouldn't it but be funny won't know. Oh, if see. the character, you know, you think he's naming it after the hawk owl yeah. and then you find out, no, he just combined two things together. He's just an idiot. Yeah. Well, I also can't call stupid. him owl man or hawk man because nope. both of those things already exist. Yep. Hawk owl it is. He also can't be owl or hawk because again, those characters exist. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, we got hawk owl because I just need to make it that. Uh, his costume is fun. Like, I, I like it. It looks very familiar. Well, it looks like Batman. Right. And, uh, but he does have these bulging eyes, and when he's screaming his head off, he just looks insane. Yeah, I love this. That's <laughs> awesome. He's just back. But he also looks like Night Owl. Yeah. Yeah, Night Owl, kind of like Yeah, Port he looks Owls. like Owl Man. He looks like Owl Night Owl. Man. He looks like Talon. He looks like any bird-themed supervillain. Yeah. Or superhero that's also a Batman pastiche. But <laughs> he's here, too. And you're like, why is Hawk Owl stalking this like orphanage, like why did he? He's recruiting. Course, you, you, well, that's the thing is he is recruiting, uh -huh. but you don't know that. You mm. just assume, oh, the superhero showed up, and the children, of course, think he's Spider Man because that would be funny if we made that reference. Because also, like, in no reality does anyone think that Spider Man wasn't he there to catch the criminals? <laughs> well, he shows up and catches the criminals, but I think but he's actually known? there spying on these children because he is going to show up as Jack Danner at the next day and try to adopt one of the children. Hank does the clapper thing, and he's like, go ahead and kick their ass, not Spider-Man. And he's like, I've got my night vision on you, idiot. And then he <laughs> turns the lights out, and then Hawk Owl kicks ass. And you're like, oh, okay, that was funny. Yeah, sometimes he, you know, heroes have problems. He's relatable, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, he's not, he's, he's like Indiana Jones. He's an imperfect hero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Hawk Owl traps the bad guys, and then Father Joe and Sister Mary show up, and he's like, here you go. You know, call the police. Ha 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 ha. Like stands there like an idiot, you know, right. posing for the children. Hank is unimpressed. And then the next morning, you know, the kids are all sitting around the table and they're talking about the last evening's insanity and all the kids are trumping up the idea of like what Hawk Owl was and how it was Spider-Man or he was a friend of Spider-Man's. He was eight feet tall. He could shoot laser beams out of his cock, all this stuff. He and so- <laughs> He kind of looks like Craven the Hunter. He does. Yeah, he's got, well, cause it's like, he's got this like cape that could also be like perceived as like a 
fur. Yeah, because it's, it's like but it's, it's plumage. It's feathers. So, yeah. yeah, he's got stripes. Got a lot going on. Got a lot of stripes. The stripes all over him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. different well, different thicknesses yeah, of stripes. Exactly. I see. Yeah, no, he is covered in armor. You know, so H Hank is a dick about it, and uh, he gets sent to the blackboard to write more things on it. Uh, meanwhile, Jack, aka Hawk Owl, is in a limousine with his butler slash childhood best friend but I don't think they knew that when they wrote the first issue because <laughs> his name is Daniel but in the first issue his name's James so clearly they didn't know what they were doing and the time between the first and second issues is insane bang up editing oh yeah well James proof, fired <laughs> proof that this will be the Marvel style of editing which is to say not We'll call him Tolliver because that's his last name mm -hmm. whether it's James or Daniel is dependent on which issue you're reading. <laughs> Uh, also, Aunt Ruth. That's James. Daniel is my middle name. Uh, they don't even. They don't even <laughs> explain it. This is the kind of book where you could get away with that. You go. Why did you call me James? Oh, because I got liquored up before I adopted children. Like it could be any number of yep. of off like, nah. color, inappropriate, hand wavy jokes they could have made. But instead, they didn't catch it because again, this book isn't being edited by anybody. We meet Aunt Ruth. She is the sister of Jack. She is Jack's actual aunt. Okay. Is Dad's sister, I believe. Jack's parents died, as is tradition with the character like Batman. There are other relatives. Yes, well, there's Aunt Ruth, uh, which I guess is like supposed to be a reference to uh, the Aunt Adam Lee? West, no, oh. the Adam West Batman show, which had Aunt Harriet. Ah. Oh God, yeah. Jack believes that his parents died as an accident. Mm -hmm. Like, my dad was drunk driving and they drove off a bridge and they died. Aunt Ruth believes that it's a conspiracy and they were assassinated. This goes nowhere and is not in any way confirmed. Right. All we know is that... Well, that was it's, for, it's, like, issue 100. Oh, yeah, yeah. For the inevitable <laughs> series, multiple series of Ultimate Adventures. Right. But I mean, Batman got so many issues, I don't see why this came. Yeah, yeah. Marvel's Batman should sell even better. But Aunt Ruth is the one who believes in the conspiracy, but Jack, the Batman character who would be motivated by conspiracy, doesn't. Ha-ha! What a twist. What a twist indeed. So that's happening. Uh, and everyone, by the way, in the limousine is telling Jack that uh, adopting a child f for no good reason is a horrible idea and you shouldn't do it. We don't want to. Also, Aunt Ruth is really resentful because essentially what happened was after Jack's parents died, she had to raise Jack and she resents giving up the best years of her life to do so, which of course she didn't, by the way, because at some point in his like early prepubescence, she just hands him off to the groundskeeper and the groundskeeper raises him. Now she's technically there physically, but she has no role in his I mean, upbringing. she's there in the mansion. Right, she lives physically. near him, but right. she does not do anything to raise him, uh, but she still resents him for it and uh, so that's, that's another character moment for her. Uh, but anyway, they all go with Jack to the orphanage. Jack makes a big presentation. You know, hi, I'm here to adopt one of you. I get one of you. It's so weird. Take one of you home it's with like, you. I, I, I don't pretend to know how the adoption process works at orphanages. <laughs> it's but like, I kind of like the Dark Knight. You break a pool cue yeah. in half, you toss it in the middle. <laughs> Tryouts. I, I fear it's not like Futurama where they just bring all the children out and then you just look at them and you pick one up and then you leave. Like, it, <laughs> So this one, that one. So the children ah, all excellent choice. Ah, good choice. Good year on that one. <laughs> no, it's it's like a it's like an animal shelter. You see them in their natural environment. You see them yeah. interact and play. Right? And you just yeah. go hmm. That one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid that's a bonded pair. You're gonna have to take both. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never mind. Which is literally the case with every adoption I've seen in the last ten years. I guess I'll take animal adoption. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. Oh, okay. Good so anyway, uh, uh, the children are all like children at him. You know, they're, they're right. like one of them's like, you know, do you have video games at home? He's like, no, but we will if I adopt you. And he's like, well, do you have candy? He's like, again, I'll buy some for you one day if I adopt you. And one I'm of them's rich. like, will you take me to the bathroom? And he's like, well, why? <laughs> and he's like, because I have to poop. And he's like, I don't have to watch, do I? And everyone's like, what? <laughs> why, why are you saying those things? Like, what? what are you prepared for this? And he's like, anyway, whatever. I don't then, think you're a dad. I don't think you're gonna. You be are not gonna. No, yeah, this no. Is not Meanwhile, right. Hank, of course, is like asking him questions about like the electoral college because we're in the wake of the Bush Gore election, so uh -huh. you know, he, he asks him a controversial question that actually busts 
Jack's brain a little bit, and Jack's like, oh, this kid's really fun, ha, ha, ha. And, uh, you know, Hank obviously acts like a complete asshole and then gets kicked out of the room. He's like, good, that's what I wanted anyway, and he leaves. And uh, everyone is like, Jack is going to pick the douchebag. Huh. And, of course, he does. Uh, right, because uh, he's got a lot of spirit he's or got something. Of, he's got a lot of spirit. So, and, of course, Jack knows. He's also the oldest. This, he's, the, he's in the best fighting shape. Exactly, and he saw uh, him in action earlier when, you know, he took down Jay and saw Bob. So, yeah, are we to believe that he set this up he absolutely this set morning this up. after the, the incident? incident. Yeah. He was like, oh, I want that kid. Well, because the whole thing was set up between Jack and Father Joe, as will be revealed later uh, in the book. The Father Joe is also kind of a father figure for Jack because, of course, when Jack's parents died, he was an orphan. Does Father Joe know that Jack is Hawkman? Yes, he does. Or Hawk Owl? Hawk Owl. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry. So Father Joe is like, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the metaphor kind of breaks down. <laughs> okay. But uh, yes, Father Joe facilitates Jack's adoption of Hank, but also leaves it up to God. He's not like, hey, this kid is full of piss and vinegar. Like, take him along. He'd definitely be a Robin character. But uh, no, but he, but he is like sure that Hank will be the one who's chosen. Right. Hank goes upstairs and he's like, all right, pack your things. And this is the first time we see any humanity from, from Hank. He's like, well, no, I'm, uh, like, please don't kick me out. Hank assumes oh, that it's he because he's, that, uh, he he's hasn't just, been told. It's like, that's enough of you. Yeah, there right. were like You're seven done. last straws for Exactly. Hank. And yeah. he's like, well, no, I'm sorry. And he's like, no, 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 you've been selected. You're going home now. And he's like, oh. I don't think I want that. And he's like, oh, <laughs> goodbye. So, well, I don't think you get a choice. Yeah, you do. Matter. Yeah, no, you do. So he goes home. <laughs> no, but they're saying in the book he doesn't. Oh, yeah, exactly. So he leaves and, uh, you know, beautiful imagery of him walking into the shadow of Hawk Owl, our favorite character in the Marvel Universe. Oh, yeah. So uh, Hank goes to Danner Manor. <laughs> and I'm, I, I, I am 100% certain that that is why his last name is Danner. Yeah, because yeah, it's a stupid last name. It makes no sense. No, it's but, it, but it rhymes with manor, and that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> These are the jokes. It's a Lanshin Mansion. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's as much thought that went into it. Yep. So and they go into the manor, and of course, like we're making references to Batman, but like vague or weird or selective ones. You know, like mm -hmm. they get in there and it's like postmodern. Right. It's and like the opposite. Like, right, yeah. And he's like, oh no, it used to be an old gothic manor, but I had that gutter when I was 20. <laughs> this is what a what a well-adjusted Batman would do, right. I guess. Or just a just a different one. Or just a just completely a different more person. obnoxious one. Yes. that you don't really want to read about. Right. So the kid is like, "All right, I'm leaving." You know, everyone's trying to be nice to him, and he's like, "Well, just show me my room. I don't want I don't want to be here. So stop pretending like you like me or care about me. I even I I, I heard your sighs from over Jack's shoulder, Aunt Ruth." You know, yeah. like, I know you don't want to be. I don't. You don't want me to be here. And she's like, "You're right. I don't." Yeah, I, I think, think this is a terrible this idea. This is a terrible idea. You're a dick. <laughs> and I have no. He picks the of this worst one out of all of them. So yeah, no. And I'm not gonna pretend. Thanks for the license to do so. So <laughs> everyone leaves, and, and Jack like turns to Lee, his loyal other butler. It's more like a driver, mm -hmm. and uh, he's like, "You think that was chauffeur?" Yes, chauffeur. Thank you. Mm. And uh, Lee is, you know, he's like, "Lee, you th you think this is a good idea?" And Lee like just turns away from him, like, "No, um, no," because it's like, "Why sorry. did you? Why did you think that this would be a good idea?" Like, no right. one is behind you on this. Yeah. And we've we've never seen any explanation for why he thinks it's a good idea. And the explanation, by the way, is he wants a Robin. Yeah. Like he'll make I, an excellent I, Robin. I, I can't to, say that. Right. But he does say it later. I mean, I mean he, he could say it because they all know, right? right? They all know that he is Hawk Owl. So, yeah. yeah. Also, don't they? Wouldn't they all know that that's what he's trying to do? Yes. Because they do. That's and, his job, right? So it's like, well, the kid's obviously going to be part of it. Yep. You, you're not going to keep it a secret from him. I mean, <laughs> they're they're aware of the plan, yeah. and the okay. plan, by the way, is essentially child abuse. I mean, like it's you know it's child endangerment. <laughs> is, is Lee mute? Yeah. Yes. Well, no. Lee is not mute, but he is portrayed as mute until he isn't anymore. So he's so that could be a twist. Predates. He's Cato. Yeah, is yeah. what he is. Well, yeah, because he's a chauffeur. He wears the thing. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a bodyguard. Yeah, and Plus, he's a martial artist. So anyway, Daniel takes Hank to his room, and he's just like, "Hey, if you need anything, you know, just let me know." And uh, Hank is just a jerk, Daniel Tolliver, mm -hmm. and uh, and Tolliver like just turns around and just lays into him. Oh my God! What? Just completely loses it at this kid, where he's like, 
He's like, <laughs> I was also an orphan, and oh. you just got handed like a winning lottery ticket, and you're acting like a piece of shit, and I'm not going to hear it. <laughs> and, like, and I don't want to hear any more nicknames for me. You, my name is Mr. Tolliver, or Sir. So that, and that's what I want to hear from you. And I don't want to hear about anything. He's like, do I make myself clear? And he's just like, yes. And he goes, that was rhetorical. Shut up. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> and then oh, slams okay. the door. You can pull back a little bit, Tolliver. No. Is, I mean, I, I, I sympathize with the sentiment. Right? I, but, uh, and it's just, it's, it's the tough love that Daniel Tolliver's going to administer. Because, like, Jack is, uh, you know, he's a pushover. Right. But also, uh, just rampant abuse in this book yeah. for this one kid. Uh, so, you know, Daniel, obviously, uh, because he likes to climb churches and jump out windows and stuff, he immediately jumps out his own window and he sees the hawk owl mobile flying car leave. And he's just like, great, this place sucks and it's weird. And this will be a complete tonal shift from his reaction to it later in the book because... <laughs> Obviously, significant amount of time has passed between right, those issues, we forgot and we forgot what, what happened. Was like, which is yeah. also one of many parallels we can draw between this and All Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, <laughs> which portrays a completely hopelessly insane Batman right. and an equally insane and impudent Robin. But that book came out three or four years after this one. So actually, what happened was Frank Miller must have read Ultimate Adventures and went, That's my Batman now, and completely <laughs> ate this up. But, oh, if, sure, that's funny. but if you read this now, you're going to be like, Oh, this is just All-Star Batman. And it's like, no, but All-Star Batman came out like three or four years after this. Wow. This is the first craziest Batman you've ever seen in comics. So this is what you can blame that on. I mean, no, it's Frank. It's just all crazy on <laughs> yeah, Frank. Yeah, That's, he never read this. He did not. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I could make the surest bet of my life, it is that Frank Miller did not read Ultimate Adventures. And you know how I know? Because no one's read <laughs> So we go to an internet cafe because it's 2002. Oh, that's, those, those exist. are things, yeah. And uh, there's a robbery, and we're making Pulp Fiction references because there's a character named Zed, and we got, you know, whatever. So then uh, Hawk Owl shows up, and he kicks their ass. He takes their names. He, you know, he, 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 he saves the day. Uh -huh. And uh, the clerk offers Does he kill? Him. No, he just beats the shit out of them. Okay. He does not kill them. So we, similar in that respect to Exactly. That. Yeah. Okay. But he doesn't say, like, don't kill! He just doesn't. Right. He doesn't have a rule against it. Yeah. Well, maybe he does, but we don't hear him whine right. about it He's all He's a time. weirdo about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he also doesn't get, like, no guns! Yeah, he does not do that. Although he doesn't use them, but he just doesn't talk about it. He just right. does it. Uh, but anyway, the uh, the clerk offers him a AOL disc with a thousand free hours on it. Fart. Ha, 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 ha. Take that, DC! Because at that point, uh, AOL Time Warner owned uh, Warner Brothers and right. DC Comics, right. whatever. Hank's going to go to school. Uh, Jack is still optimistic about it. You know, he's kind of like, oh, like, I'll bet that you and Aunt Ruth are friends by the end of the week. And uh, Tolliver's like, I'll take that action. <laughs> are you uh, kidding me? There's no way this, anyone's going to be this kid's friend. I'll bet you your entire future. <laughs> <laughs> so they drive him to uh, a public school in downtown Chicago in a limousine, which... Uh, not exactly the best move for a young orphan kid. Uh, they drop him off, and he's like, so why don't you just kill me here, like, instead of letting me get murdered in the school? <laughs> and right. uh, so they drop him off, and while they're dropping him off, like, kids spray paint on the limousine, like, rich kid die. Like, this kid is done for. I'm sure it's very common for people to tag limousines while there's while people While they're in sitting them. in them. Uh, I doubt it, but it's also a That's literary. That's just how device. rampant I mean, crime it's is. Just, uh, for well, no, just no, no, no. It's because if you're in a limo, like limos are not meant to get out and stop at you. They're like, oh well, we'll just get this cleaned later. It's yeah, exactly. It's not worth the aggravation. Yeah, they don't even care that we do it. Poor Fagredo just he had to portray it between two panels yep. and knew that he had to selectively depict yep. certain but, action well, over other action. There's nowhere for me to put it. It's got to go in the car. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> So then, uh, <laughs> well, I want him to see it when he gets out of school later. Yes. Right. Well, so oh, it'll be on the car. Well, no, no, no one ever references it ever again. It's just for us, because Hank will be beaten savagely by his peers. But that's not before he meets the principal, who is also a friend of Jack's, uh, uh, who grew up with Jack, not unlike Daniel Tolliver. See, this is a shame because, like, had he only seen him in this environment, he'd been like. Never mind, I'm going to adopt one of these other kids. <laughs> they already have parents. I don't care. They're much better fighters. Exactly. No, this kid's actually pretty strong, as we'll find out later. And uh, it, it's for no good reason, by the way. It's not like he's like a super soldier or something. He's just mm. he's just strong for his age. He's agile. He's quick. And, you know, he's he's got a chip on his shoulder. Okay. But uh, we meet two characters. It's the principal and his secretary? 
His wife oh. is cheating on him openly, and uh, you know, is, he drives a crappy car. He, he has a he has a crappy life. Right. But he is still a kind of dopey, optimistic pushover, <laughs> doormat, if you will. Is Someone that somehow supposed to like inform us of him. Yeah. Is it important? It, it is important. It actually informs all of the principal's character. He is a major player in this book. The principal is. The principal is yes. Someone did not like their high school principal, I think. No, they didn't. <laughs> I think somebody had a real problem with what happened in school. <laughs> they yes. have some things to say. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the, the principal is like, you know, he's a, he's a hokey he, fuddy-duddy. He looks, this looks like a movie he's, character. And uh, the principal obviously was kept abreast of everything. He's aware of what Jack was doing and adopted Hank and gave him the, the lowdown. So the principal explains to Hank that like there's a history between him and Jack. Actually, he was friends with Jack and Jack's older brother who died tragically. The framing device here is that the secretary asks questions that the reader might ask, testing the limitations of our parody. Because of course, the principal reveals that the older brother, Jack's older brother, died, died young. Mm. And the... Secretary Ms. Gale asks something like, yeah, was, it, was it a horrible tragedy that defined Jack's life from here on out? And he's like, no, he stepped on a rake and bashed his brains out. It was stupid and random. And he's like, oh. And then he's like, well, what about the, uh, the parents dying? Was that also a like, definitive moment in Jack's, in, in, in Jack's life? And the principal explains, no, uh, his father was an alcoholic and he drove a car off a bridge. It was a complete accident uh, and Jack did feel horrible about it, but of course, eventually got over it because he knew that he had no control over that, and uh, you know, so he's completely well adjusted. Uh huh. Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> that I I understood that earlier, but here it is again. Thank you, bizarre exposition. Yeah. Why would you need to restate that? No, because we're me. making a joke about Batman. We're making fun of supplant. We're subverting Batman and your expectations. But this also leaves us for ripe for parody when later on the uh, rake is left out on the yard. Oh <laughs> that yeah, freaks the hell out. That's right. I'm surprised it wasn't uh, hawk rake or uh, rake owl. But, 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 but this guy didn't get over it because he became hawk owl. No, no, no. he became hawk owl for a completely different reason. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he's rich and bored. Yeah, sometimes people <laughs> just become superheroes for the right reasons, not oh. just because they were compelled by some asinine quest, right, to uh, stop to... crime. <laughs> Or help people. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. That, that, that actually, that's their point. Is that like uh, Jack is just altruistic. He right. just wants to just help a good people guy. for for the right reasons, as right. opposed to just being like, uh, uh, you know. Seems but, like he should just fund the local authorities. Well, yeah. Well, Fire, yeah. police, well, think, ambulances. I, 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 yeah, but it doesn't work. I think Zimmerman wants to make a point about Chicago as well, about mm. how like that's fo that's folly as well. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Hank makes fun of all of them, and so uh, the principal puts him in remedial class where uh, the worst of the worst students are, obviously, based on what Ron Zimmerman believes about school. And so uh, Hank is uh, tormented by his peers. You know, they spit on him, and, they, uh, and then they beat him, uh, you know, horribly. Does the principal know that Jack is Hawk Owl? I don't think so. Because if he yes, did know... He, he does eventually know. Okay. But I don't recall if he if he knows from the get-go. Because again, if he knew from the get-go... Right, he, then he knows that Hank is put, supposed to be the He sequel. puts him into remedial class and be like, well, this will toughen him up. Right. We need to, like, condition him. Yeah, no. In this, in this case, Hank is a jerk to the principal despite the principal's multiple attempts to help Hank get a leg up and be in a different class. And this is a punishment for being such yeah. a jerk. He's like, all right, you don't want, you want to spurn my assistance? Then you, then, you then meet my the extended hand by slapping it away? All right, then, you're on your own. Then you're on your own. You're going to get... You're going to you know, learn a lesson. Exactly. About being a dick to me. They, Nobody's a dick to me! I'm the principal! Well, hang in Gosh, there. Gosh, golly. <laughs> he does say those things. Uh, so, uh, uh, Jack offered to pick up Hank with the limo at the end of school, which Hank refuses, and then says, let me take the bus. So then Hank and Tolliver wait for the bus, and then when the bus drives by, clearly the bus driver's also involved with these kids because they just throw Hank out the moving bus onto the doorstep of uh, Jack Danner. Well, actually, the bus driver's probably really pissed because this is very much out of the bus's normal route. Well, that's very true. <laughs> I could also imagine that Hank was probably not super respectful and friendly to the bus driver. Mm. Uh, but anyway, so then Hank has a horrible day. Uh, you know, 
he goes to his room, he passes Aunt Ruth, Aunt Ruth's like, how was your day? He's like, you don't care. She's like, you're right. <laughs> and then uh, he goes to his room. Obviously, you know, it's nighttime, so Hawk Owl is uh, gonna go out again. Uh, you know, Hank is compelled to go out the window again. He sees the Hawkmobile, Hawk Owl mobile leave. We never actually named the car. Mm. Um, Hawk Owl mobile, yeah, yeah, that's it. So <laughs> Hank sees that where the Hawk Owl mobile came from, and there is a suspiciously structured cloud that is always over the top three floors of the manor. And so he climbs it and finds out that it is, in fact, solid and then crashes through it because the entire thing is a facade built as a kind of nest and headquarters for <laughs> Hawk Owl. I see, it's in the top of the building. Oh, as opposed to the basement? Right. Ooh, this might as well be Shakespeare. Well, I mean, bats <laughs> live in caves, but owls live in roost in nests. Nests yeah. or whatever. So, and we see that like there's a number of owls, there's like hundreds of owls within the nest, and so it must be And there's hawks in, in there too, and they're just like fighting each other. Constantly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just owls. It's just the owls. Well, yeah. Maybe they are hawk owls. No, no. Oh, no, but we know, we know that, that for the not. character, it's a combination. He's like, where are the hawks? Yes. yes, the hawks and the owls, but I can only get the owls because they keep eating the hawks. Well, and, and, <laughs> incidentally, okay, so I'll just cut to the chase when it comes to that. Ah. Uh, when young Jack is inspired by you know, mm. his animal nature, he sees a hawk hunting an owl, and he saves the owl from the hawk and then rescues the owl. So like, the owls are really like the most sympathetic creature. He battles the hawk. I see. So I guess it's like he takes on the namesake of the creatures he's protecting and the creature he fought. Yeah, like oh. Crime Bat. Yeah. <laughs> or, or Bat Mosquito. Because that's what bats eat. Right. Yeah. Although he, he doesn't become the mosquito. No. It? He'd have to... Hank is now in the lair. He sees like all this crazy equipment and all these owls. Uh, he sees that there's a giant like bureau made into a giant owl that has like a lock on it. And so he breaks into it and he finds what would become his Robin costume. He doesn't put two and two together about that. Right. Uh, before Tolliver shows up and he's like, what are you doing in here? And he's like, okay. So And Hank is like, so you're Hawk Owl. Huh. Because you are a badass and you're capable and Jack Danner sucks and he's a stupid idiot. Right. And Tolliver's like, you're dumb and I don't like you. <laughs> and you're wrong all the time. And right. get out. And get out. Then Hawk Owl arrives and uh, Hank tries to hide. Uh, Tolliver needs to explain to Jack that Hank is in the lair, but uh, Jack is just so gassed up from being a badass and kicking the shit out of people that uh, you know deserve it that uh, he doesn't even notice that Hank's in the lair. And so as he regales Tolliver with his uh, tales of exploits in the nightlife, uh, Hank reveals himself, but not before. Uh, Jack says something like, so yeah, that kid thing isn't really working out, is it? He's a real piece of shit. Like, man, I, and <laughs> I right, get that's it. That's a bad idea. That was a You're horrible right call. Kid. And then the kid... Oh, says, I wish I could put, give him back. Can we give him back? Right. He doesn't say... He's actually not nearly as callous as we are describing, <laughs> but that is the nature of the show, so we're just going to stick with it. And uh, so Hank takes it that way anyway. And so right, uh, right. he's like, oh, I'm sorry, kid. I didn't... I was just running my mouth. I like to do that. But anyway, listen. And Hank's like, shut up. You don't even like me. I'm going to leave. So he runs oh, away. Boy. And he goes uh, back to his no, room. Oh, oh. Yes. No, he's gone. Uh, yeah. And Tyler was like, nice. And he's like, good job. I didn't give you a three speech balloon monologue screaming at him like you did, Tyler. <laughs> Jack, you know, feels like a heel. He throws his you know, helmet off in, right. in rage. Jack gives Hank a little bit of like a lowdown about what's going on, mm -hmm. you know, who I am and what I'm all about. And uh, Tolliver kind of spills the beans and explains that like Hank was meant to become his sidekick and that was his costume. And Do you have a phone? <laughs> I, un unrelated. Unrelated to anything that you just said. Oh, he does. No, he's like, he's like. So I'm gonna call CPS <laughs> and get out of here. Like, just drop me off at oh, the, sure, at the yeah. orphanage. And he's oh, like, Oh yeah, we're just gonna take you back. Right. Yeah. yeah. No problem. Yeah. He's like, No. Like, Tolliver's like, No. Yeah. No. You see too I've, much. I've deprogrammed that number from the phone. If you try yeah. and dial it, it's not gonna. Yeah. Be Tolliver good. over is like, he, he's like, I could probably hypnotize him into thinking that the whole thing was a dream. We could just drop him off at the orphanage. Like, ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Dana's like, no! No! We've come too and, far! And Jack's like, no, we are we are making this happen. So then Jack like tries to prove his point by grabbing a whole bunch of swords, just throwing them at Hank. And Hank, you know, does masterful acrobatics and avoids them. And he's like, you just tried to kill me with swords! And he's like, no, I believed in you and I knew that you could avoid them. And he's like, I, that is not comfort for me. <laughs> yeah, That's not you, the same. You should not. I may not have been able that. to do that. Right. 
Right. Well, he's like, because I observed you. Like, I've, I've been watching you. And it, which is also another parallel to All Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, because of course, right. when Batman is at the circus with Vicky Vale, you know, Vicky Vale says, "Whoa! Like, check out that kid. Watch him go." And Batman says, "Yes, I've had my eye on him for some time." Let <laughs> so me check him at the principal. We got to see how the principal's doing. Right. What's going on with that principal? Uh, so uh, I don't care. He comes home, and uh, his wife's getting uh, banged by the mailman. And, oh no! And, and she's like, you know, get out of here! Like, go back uh, to the Pizza Hut and kill an hour while I get railed. And he's like, oh, but this is my house. And then he gets kicked out, and they all laugh <laughs> oh, at him. Oh, come on! Come on! <laughs> also, it's like oh, 7 God. p.m. The mailman shouldn't be here anymore. Nice. Come yeah, on. he's been banging me that long. It's pretty gross. So oh, yeah. You, so you said you, you said after seven I could come home. <laughs> <laughs> he actually. She, she told him to like stay somewhere until a certain uh, hour, and he's like, I got done early. <laughs> so anyway, that's sad. I just want a piece of the action too. <laughs> <laughs> I have to sit in the corner in my chair. You know how it is. Nope, that's not how it is. She's like, no, you loser. So then it's he amazing. leaves. He's just like, but, but it's my house. But I own the house. But I'm the principal. Like, what? <laughs> Yeah, that's... What does that have to do with you getting thrown out of your house? Well, because that's I'm job. like, because my job is like, I'm in charge. But I'm like, in charge. to me. What is Ron doing? Right? He's... <laughs> this is insanity. It's, it's total insanity. So then, uh, we, you know, uh, Daniel drops Hank back off his room. He's giving him dinner. Hank's like, I'm not hungry. And he's like, yes, you are. Like, it's 9 p.m. <laughs> you have to be. He's like, all right, you can just pretend like you're going to throw it away. You can eat it when I leave. Like, just shut <laughs> up. I... Just, oh, okay, you'll throw it away. Okay, okay. okay. You win. Right, whatever. Uh, but there's a little bit more mutual respect between Tolliver and Hank mm. uh, because Hank is being nice to... Uh, because Tolliver is being nice to Hank and, you know, Tolliver kind of gets what Hank's going for. And obviously, the tough love spiel was all just trying to... Yeah. Right. Just get through to get him. Get through to him, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, oh, is that when uh, Hank is visited by the uh, the owl spirit? Yes. A yeah. literal owl flies through Hank's window, and, uh, you know, it's just, it, it, it's a member of the family. Like, the the owl lived in the nest. No, 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 no. This is the owl god, right? The, <laughs> right. The, the totemic the, the spirit totem part of it. That, that makes him who he is. One no, of it's the a, nine metals. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'd find that out in issue 12. Or right, right. Or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> But uh, but no, it's just for now. It's just a real owl. It's the it's the oldest owl in the roost, and oh. uh, it visits him. And it's just it's his only friend. It's nice to him, and mm. he shares his dinner with the owl. And, and he uh, calls him Ralph. He calls him Ralph. And I Ralph don't know the why. owl. Sure. It's because he feeds him parts of a sandwich, and the owl can't digest it. <laughs> so it Ralphs it up. it up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so well, that's so gross. I'm gonna call you Ralph. <laughs> ah. Yep. Sure. Sure. That's great. So I love that. Jack goes to visit with uh, Father uh, Joe, and uh, you know we reveal that Father Joe knew about Jack the whole time and knew about right. the, the, the grooming of this kid into being a child. <laughs> Thanks for super... taking this pain in the ass off my hands. Yeah. He's not. He's actually I'm no, glad he's we're like, able I... to help each other out. Yeah, but well, uh, this will also change uh, from issue to issue because they forgot what happened in the last one. Because for uh. now, Father Joe is gung ho on Hank being part of Jack's mission to be superheroes and fight crime. Mm. Uh, but later he'll be completely against that mission because of course, like who could keep track when well, things happen and what issues? Well, that would be crazy for him to be, uh, that yeah. can't be right, that, that's not right. Right. Uh, and we, we I, didn't, I didn't say that. No, no, I, I, couldn't not, say that. I, I didn't facilitate I the adoption kids. process at all. But, uh, but no, <laughs> Father Joe still clearly believes in Hank and he's like, no, this is God's will, you're gonna be fine. Right. Uh, and, and you do good work too, Jack. I don't. I don't decry your mission until issue six, <laughs> when I do randomly. But of course, right. there is some like sh th there's some stuff that happens that maybe might shake their resolve in his mission. But we'll talk about that later. Is this are they going for like a Daredevil thing? Maybe. I mean, at this point, probably. Let's reference that too. Sure, why not? I mean, it's Marvel. Yeah, you know? we even own that. Cool. So you know, another day. Hank goes to school. He gets. What, his what ass was the kicked. point of that? Oh, well, you know, just establishing like just the true motivation. There's a, there's of the a whole plan. It's there's all connected. It's all yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So another day goes by. Jack goes to visit with. What's going to happen in the? What are, what are we doing? We're actually just getting to the to the midway. Like, okay, because there's no villain. It's coming. Two more pages. <sighs> Stay with me. <laughs> on Ultimate Adventures. You were on thin ice here. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I was like, what? Are, I know. Where's this going? I, I, well, I think we all know it's nowhere fast. <laughs> So yeah! Jack goes to Hank's school where he bumps into the principal. And of course the principal and Jack have a history and they're friends. Uh, they talk about how uh, the principal that is mentions that Hank, I think is, uh, you know, he's getting through to those kids. You know, it's, it's, I'm sure by the end of the week he'll be, you know, they'll be, they'll be fast friends. And of course, uh, like, you know, Hank gets thrown by the kids uh -huh. uh, onto the stoop. And uh, you know, he's being 
beaten savagely by these people all the time. But he's such a good fighter, I don't understand. Yeah, well, they're bigger. They're technically bigger than him. Right. He and can have swords. Of them. Yeah. Multiple swords thrown at <laughs> him. Literally, in. it's like, that's actually the first time I've even thought of it. But that being said, I've only really thought about this book three times <laughs> in my yeah, life. Yeah, but he has, like, he has like Spider-Man reflexes. Yeah, it's like, like shouldn't what? he be able to kick their asses? Uh, but anyway, so the, uh, a, a fight breaks out between Hank and the kids. Uh, the principal gets involved, and he, you know, he, like, distances Hank and the other kid. And while he's talking to their kid, Hank is getting his bearings and assumes that the principal is an aggressor. Mm. So he pops the principal in the face and knocks the principal on his ass and his head. The principal oh. conks himself on the head and Jack is like, oh man. Like, and he is so upset because like the principal's an old friend of his and like this right. kid, he didn't even want him anymore because he's such a jerk. So you know, Hank's like, oh crap, like I'm really sorry. And he's like, shut up. <laughs> like, sh just go away, man. Ooh. Like, you're breaking things that matter to me now, you know? <laughs> and uh, so he, he helps him on his feet. The fuck? I know, I know. Yeah. He doesn't say Jesus. that, but it's like, that's, that's, the, that's, the, yeah, that's the gist. Implication. So he helps, uh, that is to say, Jack helps the principal onto his feet and determines just by sight that the principal is not suffering a concussion, but obviously he is. And uh, <laughs> the principal's like getting all loopy. And he's like, I'm the principal. I'm in charge. Okay. And so, Stop sleeping with me. My wife. Yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's just yelling, you're expelled, don't talk back, return to class, behave. These just, are the things that principals say. Uh, and it's course, like he's a robot. Yeah, Miss <laughs> Gale uh, also attends to the principal. She's like, oh no, I'll go with him. The ambulance immediately arrives because uh, Zimmerman didn't give uh, the artists enough time to establish like an ambulance and a call. That they want to call the ambulance, yeah. Uh, so the ambulance just appears out of thin air. No uh, running in the halls. No running in the halls, I'm the principal. So, How can you have any pudding if you don't eat your meat? Yay, Pink Floyd. <laughs> 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 Pink Floyd song. Nice. <laughs> Just yeah. these are the things. These are the things that are that, said. That are said by, by mean authority figures who I didn't like. Yeah, this is definitely, I mean, and wouldn't it be a reference? Because Zimmerman would definitely be into Floyd. <laughs> if I come back in here, I'm cracking skulls. That's right, yeah. So uh, Ms. Uh, Gale goes with the principal in the uh, ambulance and... Uh, Immediately, Hank internalizes this. Like, Hank will remember this happened. And he's just like, you know, he's like, this is all my fault. This is all my fault. I, I, you know, I, I hurt this poor man and he didn't even, I, I didn't want to. Meanwhile, Jack is like, you laid that old man out, man. Like, you, you, you knocked a grown man <laughs> on the ground. Like, that's kind of impressive. Mm. You know, you, you have some strength. And they talk, and basically, he's like, yeah, I've been an orphan all my life. It's I called kick unbridled ass. rage. Exactly. <laughs> But uh, the two of them take a walk through the city, and they're talking, and uh, and they, and they kind of connect. And uh, you know, obviously, you know, Jack is like, "Look, like, I'm sorry, I flew off the handle. Like, I I'm still getting a handle on this whole like being a dad thing. You know, I, I went into this with kind of like pure intentions. I'm really bad at it. Like, what can I do to show you that I care?" And Hank's like, "You can give up the whole hawk owl thing." He's like, "Okay." So he takes out his phone, he calls Tolliver, and he's like, "Hey, it's over. I want you to destroy everything, like take <laughs> down the roost and everything." And Hank's like, "You, you're not even talking to him on the phone." And of course, Tolliver's like, "Wrong again, kid." <laughs> he's like, "Duh." And he's like, "Okay." And he's like, "Wow, he's like you really torch the whole thing." And he's like, "Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I mean it. Like I'm in this." And he's like, all right, well, don't do that. And he's like, all right, aboard. I'll see you at home. So, <laughs> you know the whole thing when you become a parent? <laughs> yeah, right? You, 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 until you I have a child. I will do Until you have a child. You'll, you'll never, never understand. understand. Damn it. The other reason why we see Jack and Father Joe talk is because Father Joe also imparts to Jack like some inside info on Hank. You know, like the only time I've ever seen Hank happy was when I threw the ball with him. Like when I treated him like a son. Mm. It's like, do- Oh, thank God, I thought he meant fetch. <laughs> yeah, like I just threw it and he would return it to me. I mean, <laughs> essentially that is what you're doing. But <laughs> so uh, when they get home, they do have a catch and they throw the football around and they're having a great time. And he's like, how, like, we could do this forever. Like I'm totally down. Mm -hmm. And so Jack throws the ball beyond Hank's reach. So when Hank eventually reaches the ball, the ball is caught by Giant Man of the Ultimates. And <laughs> Giant Man, Captain America, Thor, Wasp, are all on the lawn. <laughs> and Iron Man. Okay. Little cameo appearance by the, event, by, by the Ultimates. Also, uh, Hank what? reveals that he is also a huge Captain America fan. Oh, okay. And Jack's like, he's not so great. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But like, this is the turning point where you're like, wow, like Jack and Hank are finally connecting. It's working. 
and then the Ultimates show up. And here is Hank's superhero, like his and, favorite superhero. And the Ultimates show up and ruin everything. I mean, they essentially do. Because the only other reference to this book and these characters ever is in one of the first issues of the Ultimates, which had just launched previously to this, mm. uh, in which they reference Hawk Owl as a potential contender for membership in the Ultimates. Oh. Which is like, I, then... I, I would be, I would not be surprised if later printings just changed the name Hawk Owl to another character. <laughs> because they want to omit this from any reference oh, because there's man. never there's literally never been a not a background cameo not like a casual name drop nothing this book came out they also made trade paperbacks which is also part of like the like new regime of marvel one of the like best things that Joe Quesada and company did including Bill Jemis unfortunately <laughs> uh, was like let's make trade paperbacks of our seminal books and hey how about we have books on the shelves that are cheap and easy to achieve as our movies are coming out and i'm like yeah marvel why don't you keep doing that <laughs> so uh anyway no we won't learn again so th this issue is just the ultimates are here they're here to recruit jack jack says no and part of the reason why he says no is because he wants to keep Hank to himself and he's mad at the Ultimates for kind of like stealing his thunder. Uh, but <sighs> also because like Jack is a loner and he's a superhero and he's Batman. And uh, Batman doesn't join even though he's a founding member of the Justice League. So uh, <laughs> The Ultimates aren't going to stay there and live in your mansion. No, but they want him to go with them. And also like once you're enrolled, like there's a whole thing where they, they explain like the perks of being an Ultimate. It's like, oh, Secret Service is going to be around you for, like from now on. They're going to be protecting Hank. Hank's like, I mean, I can go to school and not get my ass kicked. Like there'll be people there, and he's like, "Oh yeah." It's well, like, no. Oh no, they, yeah, they, they're, they're like, yes. They're like they basically hand Hank everything he wants, and Jack's like, "No, <laughs> that doesn't fit in with my Batman thing." Uh, so that being said, everyone in the Ultimate Universe except for Peter Parker is effing insane. Right. Yes. Right. So it's like this is par for the course for the fledgling Ultimate Universe. Like th th this book fits seamlessly in this world, kind of. Right. It's a little more off kilter than the rest of them. <laughs> But like <laughs> Ultimatum is on the horizon, and like right. that's just as bad. Totally place. off the rails. Like, come yeah. on. Uh, but ultimately, obviously, uh, you know, Jack puts on his hawk owl costume. He insists that Hank be part of the conversation, and then uh, instigates a fight between him and Captain America because Captain America is also a complete short fused asshole in the Ultimate Universe. Anyway, right. uh, Thor is also like more in line with Jack's politics than anyone else on the Ultimates. Hmm. So Thor is cool and is welcome in. <laughs> the nest any time. But everyone <laughs> but the else... the rest of you, get out. Get out. Uh, and so uh, Hawk Owl fights Cap. Cap easily beats Hawk Owl, but it's not a total shutout. Well, it can't mm. be. It's Hawk, Owl's, Hawk Owl's book. book. But yeah. also, like, Hawk Owl's an idiot, and so is everyone else in this book. So it's like, sure, you could have Captain America beat the living daylights out of Hawk Owl, and it would still fit with the tone of this series. Mm -hmm. That being said... The Ultimates are kind of impressed that Hawk Owl holds his own long enough, mm. but Hank is horribly embarrassed by Jack's display, uh, and ultimately oh. Tolliver ingratiates himself into the conversation and says like, yeah, you guys need to get out of here, because essentially Captain America's like, oh yeah, so anyway, you're under arrest because you just assaulted a federal officer and I'm gonna throw the book at you. Uh -huh. And uh, Tolliver's like, right. no, you endangered a child and you trespassed on my property and like all these, you broke all these rules, get the hell out of here and never come back. And then uh, Hawk Owl's like, yeah, and also like, F you, F you, F you, you're cool. Oh, I win. And I win, <laughs> double deuces, and then everyone leaves. Okay. Like, that was embarrassing. Meanwhile. Nobody came out of that looking good, except Tolliver. <laughs> except kind. Tolliver. We are getting and to Thor. the villain at some point. So, yeah. the principal goes back to his house while his wife is being railed, and she's screaming so loud you could hear her from outside. So he goes in, and then he instigates a fight with the dude who is banging his wife. Mm -hmm. And then he stabs him to death with a knife. And then he stabs his wife to death <gasps> with a knife. And then he dumps gasoline all over the house. Meanwhile, Ms. Gale is outside and she is like, finally, he's mine. <coughs> and so he pours the what? gasoline out the doorway and then makes out with Ms. Gale while setting his own house ablaze. Why? Does Ms. Gale like him? She's always liked him. Oh, th th they find each other amusing. Like they, she loves a sense of humor. She's she's already been crazy. Is she, is she grooming him? Like she's she's 
encouraging his worst aspects. But she's not the mastermind of this? No. <sighs> no, he's the mastermind. That, he's no, the she's, principal. She's inheriting this new persona that she prefers. Missed opportunity. Yeah. Wow. So he will become a new supervillain, the principal. The superintendent. The I mean, <laughs> that would make sense. That'd be a better but name, but just, he's not. It's so just the principal. the principal. That's what the superintendent is like, but you're not a superintendent. Yeah, you are absolutely not. You do not have the accreditations I do. But uh, so obviously the principal goes through one bad day. Right. And becomes crazy. Well, yep. isn't that just the Joker? And look, we've got a Harley Quinn too. Already. Already established. Just immediately, uh, and here's your Harley Quinn. Yeah. Was that Standing Tall, Rising Tall? What was that movie? What? Michael Douglas. Falling down. Falling down. <laughs> Not rising or standing at all. <laughs> the actually well, the opposite of it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever I said, switch it. Yeah. I mean, you, it got you there. <laughs> it did. So. We got there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He finally got pushed to the point where he's just like, all right, I'm going to snap and I, kill people. Yeah, I guess yep. that is kind of like a falling down reference. And we also got to make it gross, too, because like, like she's clearly younger than he is. Oh, yeah. But she is still an employee at the school. Right. But her supervillain uniform is going to be a schoolgirl outfit. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yikes. Oh, she's Brittany. Yeah. yeah. She's dressed exactly like Brittany. Yeah. From the Hit Me Baby One More Time music video. Yikes. Oh my god. Oh, and his implement of destruction is going to be paddles. Which I'm sure he uses on everyone. Holy not just shit. his victims. Okay, nope. This and is weird. The paddle I don't like this. is also going to like be versatile. Like sure, he's got the wooden ones, but he upgrades his apparatus essentially, and so it, it like he'll hit a button on the paddle and like a buzzsaw will come out of it and stuff like that. It's just like <laughs> So he's kinda like the penguin too. Yeah, he is kinda like the penguin. It's like all of Batman's villains. So Tolliver notices that uh, Hank has made a friend in the form of Ralph the Owl, and uh, so he's like, good for you, I guess. You know, whatever. It's a little weird, uh, but He's okay. saying that to the owl, by the way. Oh, yeah, no. It's like, I'm glad you it's finally like, made a friend. What's this Harry Potter shit going down here? Right. Well, it's 2002, and I gotta, <laughs> I gotta merge my metaphors here. So, you know, the principal returns to school with his, you know, arm candy, uh, Harley Quinn character. He just walks in. Just well, walks I guess he's in. got the keys. So, oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, he walks in and he's got he a just, new haircut. Oh yeah, he's got a whole new look, which is essentially his old look, but with a more modern haircut. And so uh, he just beats the crap out of the students. And then he realizes Hank's in the class. And he's like, oh, Hank's gonna get it too, because I don't like him, because he was mean to me and he's the reason I am like this anyway. Right. And uh, Hank <laughs> just jumps out the window and leaves. And he's like, damn it, well, I'm just gonna have to like, take it out on the rest of you kids. And like hits a button and the buzzsaw pops out of his custom made paddle, which I guess he made within 24 hours. But anyway, moving on. Uh, so the principal's late siege to the school, and uh, Hank goes home, and Jack and Tolliver watch on TV as the news broadcasts that the principal has essentially taken the entire student body hostage at his old school. <laughs> and uh, he's like, boy, I hope uh, Hank doesn't see that because he's definitely gonna blame himself for that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Hank does see it and does blame himself and feels bad, so he breaks back into the nest to get his costume and become Woody. This is the woodpecker costume. That's not Hank's idea. That was Jack's right. name for him. And you will be Woody. I am Hawk Owl, and you can be Woody. You know, like the woodpecker? Yeah, but like, isn't that infringement? Like, that is literally yeah. yours, naming yourself after the cartoon character. Should, you're Hawk whoa, Owl. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm not calling him Woody the Woodpecker. Yeah. Right, uh, I am uh, Woody a uh, Woodpecker. He is Woody. What is his costume character after? A woodpecker. Yeah. The end. That is completely different. Totally different. He doesn't go, ha 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 ha. <laughs> yeah. It's he, not red and blue. No. Oh, unless Cariandos draws the cover, in which case it is. Uh, it's on the back. Uh, how come he's Woody and, and not the woodpecker? Right. Why does he get a proper noun? Right. Yet Hawk Owl is just a hawk and an owl merged together, unless you're referring to the Hawk Owl. <laughs> But you're not, as revealed later. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jack dresses up as Hawk Owl and he's like, no, you're not, I, I care too much about you. This, this, the psychic thing was a terrible idea. You're not gonna do that. It's not your fault, you, it's not your responsibility. I should have made the costume. It I should have made the costume, yeah, it was a bad was, call. Like, yeah. Well, yeah, basically, you know, like, clearly the whole thing was motivated to, I need a sidekick for my superhero costume. I met this kid, he's changed my mind. I care more about him than I do about my stupid mission, but I'm also gonna, still gonna do my stupid mission, but was, I'm not gonna I was about him. to burn the entire thing to the ground. Yeah, exactly, for this kid. So it's like, yeah, like you're not 
going to be put at risk anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. So then they fight because the kid's like, no, you can't tell me what to do. So right. they battle and uh, he kicks, you know, Hawk Owl beats him because he's a child and uh, has the <laughs> owls drop a nest on him or a, a net. I meant to say. A net, funny. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Obviously, one of the owls is Ralph, uh, Hank's mm. friend. So the how the so Ralph the owl will free Hank from the nest later. But mm. uh, you know, Jack goes to uh, tell Tolliver that he's going to go kick ass and take names and save the principal from himself. Uh, but also remarks because the principal is his friend, right? Yes. So right. he's like, oh no. It's even more tragic. It's, it is. It's terribly tragic. But oh, also, now it's Two Face. He, right, boom! <laughs> look at how, look at how much miles we're getting out of this one guy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's 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 a good thing it is one guy too because we'll only get six issues. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not like oh man, you would not believe all the other characters I was going to invent. I have such a lineup for right, you. Like the PTA leader and uh, you know the, the green, soccer coach, greenhouse, <laughs> the botanist, I guess. Yeah. Well, but but Hawk Owl remarks to Tolliver like, I used like a spe like you know like the real world equivalent of like a Vulcan neck pinch on the kid and he still like took it like he mm. is tough. Right. Is yeah. there any explanation for why he's so tough or so agile? None. He just is. He just is. Because God decreed it, according to Father Joe. <laughs> right. Until the end of the series when he's like, no, it's a terrible idea. Don't do that. <laughs> the principal's going to burn some children alive in the auditorium in front of everybody. Oh, okay. And then uh, Hawk Owl uh, reveals himself and he's like, hey, don't do this. Like, we're friends. And he's like, oh, no, we're not friends. Like, you, you always hung out with cooler kids than me. And now I'm going to kick your ass and show you that I'm the cool kid now. And I'm like, you're yeah, working through some stuff. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they shoot uh, some darts at uh, Hawk Owl. And Hawk Owl, of course, deflects them from his body armor. But because he's like, Batman has that dumbass face opening. Oh, yeah. He gets one, one gets in the through. cheek and he gets yeah. knocked out. And uh, he is tortured into a coma by the principal and his uh, Britney Spears sidekick. What? Meanwhile, yeah, that's what happens. Uh, so meanwhile... Lee, the chauffeur, for no reason, dresses like a ninja, and <laughs> Hank throws, I think, a TV remote at him, breaking the window, and then Lee comes out, and he's like, hey, don't throw crap at me. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, I thought you were mute. And he's like, nope, I just choose not to talk. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just thought you were a piece of shit, and I right. didn't have anything to say to you. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to get attached to you. So Tolliver <laughs> comes in, and then Lee, Tolliver, and Hank all talk about the origin we didn't bother to explain mm. earlier in the book, and that's that Tolliver and Jack were both orphans at Father Joe's orphanage, and they were both brought in by Aunt Ruth, but also, isn't Aunt Ruth related to Jack? Like, directly? Yeah. But whatever, so... And Jack had a brother. Yeah, but the brother died earlier than his parents. Okay. So okay. anyway, Lee is what, was he a baby? No. Was it that the mom stepped on a rake? Right. While no. she was holding him, and no, it's the squished his soft skull. No. In fact, they also explain because it's actually revealed that the parents were going to prepare Jack's older brother to become the president of the United States because they're wealthy, influential people. I see. But then he died, and then they died, and so no one's going to become president. Anymore. <laughs> I, I mean, someone someone's going to become but, president, but, but not for this family. Family. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm going to be the Danners. Okay. So, uh, anyway, it turns out that Lee also is the son of the groundskeeper who suspiciously looks like Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> and uh, so, of course, as I explained earlier, Aunt Ruth can't handle raising any children, much less two of them. So she dumps Tolliver and Jack with the groundskeeper, who then raises them the same way he's raising Lee, which is to say he turns them into child soldiers and trains them into like becoming super martial artists and whatnot. And we see that displayed in a uh, sequence where he hangs all three children f by their feet from a tree with center blocks tied around their wrists. And they're all like gonna give up and just like wait for death. But then Jack has the bright idea to swing together and smash their cinder blocks together so that they won't have the weights anymore. Mm. Uh, and then he's like, all right, now we can just lift ourselves up and untie our things. Unfortunately, the act of doing it has dislocated our arms. Okay. And that's the punchline of the scene. What? And it also happens because we wanna parallel two things that are happening in two different time periods. So, you know, Jack is suspended upside down in the flashback and upside down in the present oh, by yes. the principal. Mm. Because I've read a comic book. <laughs> wow. Uh, the principal, you know, 
torturous Jack into a coma, as I mentioned earlier. Right. Meanwhile, the, the, the flashback uh, rolls on. And so we see that... <laughs> well, uh, no, 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 why are we going back to the flashback? No, well, stay in the present. Well, there's more training. show you that like, all this training happened, and then later, uh, you know, when they're around Hank's age, we see the origin for the hawk owl, which is, of course, that, like, Jack notices that a hawk is going to kill an owl, and so Jack jumps outside and he saves the owl, but is picked up by the hawk, and then he has to battle the hawk in midair, and then Mr. Miyagi comes out and he's like, he is both the hawk and the owl. Those are your characters now. <laughs> How big is this hawk? Uh, is it, it's, well, it's, it's the size of him. It's the size it's of a man. bigger than a child. You know, like hawks are. I mean, listen. I've seen raptors that are rather big. Like when you see a bald eagle in person, yeah, it's like those are, are big. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, but it can't lift a person. It ain't no. taking a twelve-year-old. I mean, it might kill one. It could kill one. Easy. Yeah, twelve-year-olds on the ground by ripping at your. And you in know. fact, we may see oh, yeah, something like vicious. that in the book. Yeah, but uh, not not <laughs> a child, but certainly a bird of prey will rip a man's face off. And they could fly off with like a cat. Yes, or even a small a dog. Right, totally. An eagle could. Yeah. I don't know about a hawk. Not a hawk. Eagles Maybe an eagle hawk. larger. <laughs> and then, I mean, you can't get much bigger than eagles. Maybe some kind of vulture. A vulture, perhaps. Uh, Again, we're, we're really testing the limits yeah. of, of believability here. But, uh, and then, of course, they do, like, special forces and stuff, which Captain America already explained uh, that, you know, Jack and right. Tolliver all went, like, they were Navy SEALs and stuff like that. Like they, right. But only Jack had the motivation out of all three of them, faced with the rising crime rate of Chicago and whatnot, right. to, to become do the something owl. about it. To, the hawk owl. The hawk owl. To put down the man and, and pick up the hawk owl. <laughs> the hawk owl. And so, uh, you know, they facilitate his madness and allow him to do it. But because he's not crazy, he's better at it than Batman. And he's more well adjusted. Is he? That. Well, that's what they say. He the hasn't. So, even though like that, they no. can also help out, and apparently Lee is also helping. Sure. Tolliver never dresses up and goes out with him on missions? Nope. Nope. He just is good at fighting, but yes. he keeps it to himself. Yes, he does. That's exactly right. Hawk Owl hasn't done anything no, he, he to actually, signify that he is good at anything. No, he says it a lot. Like, like at, at, three, at no point has he bested any no, impressive no, no. Captain foe. Captain America came to his house and said, join our team. Yes, yeah, and, and he fought him. And earlier in the book, That's it. there were at least two, if not three, scenarios where Hawk Owl regales someone <laughs> with tales of adventure from right. the evening. Now, he could... Just be masturbating in his car and eating Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> until it becomes like until it becomes daybreak and then right. shows up and goes, Whoo! I put away day of seven crime. serial killers tonight. Another day of fighting crime. So you've gained seven pounds this week. <laughs> yeah, muscle. Damn it! <laughs> I doubt it. You have muscle in your right arm. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we do the time on our tradition because Zimmerman has a history in both movies and TV of telling, not showing. Right. Uh, because they outline like all the things he does, and they range from like stopping street crime to saving dignitaries' children to rescuing babies that were missing for weeks, and you know it's like that were carried off by his owls. Right. Obviously. <laughs> uh, but no, it's just boom, 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 boom. Here's a like a laundry list of things he's doing, and in fact, he's making an impact on the crime rate of Chicago. It's like he's oh. really effective. Oh. You know, the ultimates go everywhere. You know, they they fight aliens. They're not fighting the criminal element of Chicago. Right. Anyway, so the principal drives by in his bookmobile, which is a school bus that has handwritten bookmobile on it. But I'm like, is it his car? Like, did he retrofit a bus into the bookmobile? Or is it a bus that is acting as a bookmobile that the principal just uses? Because books fall out of it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very unclear. <laughs> but all that matters is the principal, who also is throwing Jack out of the bus, uh, drops Jack off at his manor. The Danner Manor, that is. And Wait, he releases him? Yeah, well, he beats him into a coma and then dumps his body on, yeah. the, on, on the doorstep. I, I defeated him. I won. It's well, over. They're also friends. Oh, right. And so you, you came to stop me, and right. I, I beat you into a coma. I'm not going like, to kill you. I'm not going to kill you. I still want your attention and affection because right. you're still cooler than I am. Right. And also, uh, for good measure, gives him a grade, which is an F, by the way. Naturally. Of course. Because the principal also gives grades. Yeah. Yep. You get an this F. This is <laughs> a mess. I mean, it's just painful. It's pretty straightforward. It's just also boring and stupid. It's just taking yes. a long friggin' time. Boring and stupid. Comic <laughs> pop. You could put that on the cover of your reprint of Ultimate. Wait, yeah, Ron. <laughs> we, 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 Ron's we're not here. Wait, Ron ain't watching. We maybe, she, maybe Cheryl oh, watch. So we just finished issue five. We're almost done. We still haven't seen Hank. Be Woody. His, be Woody. No. 
It's been I, almost two years. He, I hope and we he hasn't don't. been put it yet. <laughs> he okay. Th th there is a misconception about this book that he only appears as Woody on the last page, and that's not true. <laughs> he doesn't because, appear at all. Because <laughs> that, that page was a promotional material piece, and there is no book about that. No, he is Woody in the book. He does dress as Woody and try to stop the principal. Okay. He gets a new costume at the end. Ah, okay, okay. So that's where the misconception comes. Yes, because but no one's read the book. He is only Woody in the last issue, though. So you can yes. see where the legend that it was actually the last page of the last true. issue may have come from. Absolutely, it's almost true. I mean, it might well, as someone well. Someone just be true. said, "Oh, he's Woody at the end." Yes, yes. Yeah. But I have seen people say he's only Woody on the last page. And I'm like, that like, is not that's true. Not you're misremembering. Yes. Yeah. By you're little, not misremembering. By a little bit. You are misparaphrasing because right. no one has read this. <laughs> He only appears in that costume on the last That's page. true. Right. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, now what? So, Hank We gotta is nurse him his... back to health. So, y y well, they, they, they get, like, doctors and they set him up with, like, a, you know, monitoring system in his own house. And so, right. they're just gonna have to wait. And uh, Father Joe shows up and he's like, you know, it's God's plan. We'll see. This is horrible. You know, he's like, Hank, don't ever become like this. Like, don't do this. This is a horrible idea. And he's like, don't worry, I would never do that. This, everyone Look where here, this life leads. Yes, and he's like, this is, everyone here is insane. Why would I ever do that? It's a horrible idea. Wait, I should do that. <laughs> yes, wait, what did you say? <laughs> I'll do the opposite, because I am a 12-year-old. Uh, so we go to Hank's room where, uh, oh, because the, when the bus drives away, you know, Hank says, like, where's, like, a, a tracer or something? You've seen so many, you've read too many comic books, you've seen too many movies. But we will send... But you got all these owls. Well, so they send Ralph the owl oh, to chase okay. after it. And then uh, later they go to Hank's room and the owl returns. But isn't he just going back to the school? You'd think that, but no. There is oh, a so lair for the principal. I imagine that if he was going to beat up students and set some of them on fire... Yeah, didn't he do that? He did that. Well, no. Did he, he, he murder those students? Okay, so like Hawk Owl appears and tries to stop them and in fact interrupts the, you know, yeah. immolation of those kids. But then he's defeated, so I assume all those kids are dead as well. Right. Which means he can't go back to the school because the cops will swarm the Oh, place. yeah, no. Well, definitely the principal. Let's, let's say it's canon that the principal killed every child in the school and burned the school down. Right. And then left. Because yeah, he clearly that's did, what he was he going to had do. The, he had the money. And there was no one to stop him. Yeah. So then he's going to Miss Gale's place. Well, it's not. It's, a, it's, it's actually a secret lair. So while everyone's like kind of, you know, sad about Jack being in the coma, right. uh, Ralph returns from his mission and identifies a photo on the mantle of Jack and Daniel Tolliver when they were teenagers playing basketball at the Y. And you can see the principal is the water boy because he's a loser and he's in the photo too. Okay. And so Ralph the Owl shatters the frame, drawing their attention to the photo and revealing that of course, like the lair is this place, is the, the YMCA where they used to play basketball together. Mm -hmm. All of them as friends. Except right. for the principal, because he was the water boy. Right, well the principal was friends with them, but was not as cool. Jack was the principal's best friend, but not the other way around. Jack was always friends with cooler kids, as is said by the principal in this book. Right. Multiple times. Multiple times, which is like, okay, this is very sad. Obviously, Hank wants to put on his Woody costume and go, you know, exact bloody revenge against the principal, but Tolliver is a grown adult, and so he's like, no, I'm gonna go do that. Plus, I know how to fight. I'm basically Hawk Owl without all the bullshit. So he's like, I'm gonna go- I'm Hawk Owl without all the practice. Yeah, so I'm gonna go- <laughs> Yes, well, actually. Yeah. So I'll be handily defeated, yeah. and which, he, which of course it is. And so he goes to the, to the lair, you know, which of course was revealed by Ralph the Owl. Right. So he goes, and uh, meanwhile- He should bring the elephant gun. That's true. The Alfred's uh, aforementioned uh, elephant gun from our previous episodes. Maybe yeah, but what Ralph is saying is that both the principal and Tolliver are at the Y. Well, clearly that is what he's saying because that's what Well, because Tolliver is in the picture. Yes. I don't know if the owl could possibly be that smart. How could it? But, well, because he's an older owl. You know, he's been around. Right, you know? right. He knows exactly how many licks it takes to get the Right, it's like, out. there's many pictures but only one of them is one of the place that you need to be at. Yeah, with the specific, with the guy exact, in it. correct people, all of them. Oh my God, yes, that's true. Oh, well, except Jack's not there. No, but, but he the, would be if he wasn't in a coma. Right. So then uh, Hank 
basically takes Lee's advice to become Woody and then dresses like Woody and then goes right. uh, to the to the YMCA. Meanwhile, Jack comes out of his coma just as Woody essentially says, like, I'm gonna do the right thing, and then Jack's like, no. Because like Lee says that's what Jack would want. And Jack's like, no. Because no. You know, Jack cares more about Hank right. than the mission. He's gonna get killed. So yeah. uh, they uh, so the principal tortures Tolliver, in which he busts out the paddle and the paddle has a whip in it, and I can imagine the oh, visual no. of, and the, we, we know they know what they're doing, you know, having a black man strung up and being whipped by a white guy, because when Mr. Miyagi trains the kids, and Tolliver talks back to Miyagi, and I'm calling him Miyagi because that's, that's what, he's, what he is, is yeah. in the book, uh, he says, you will call me master. He, he means it as like a you know, martial artist, and he goes, no. You will call me sensei. The rest of you will call me master. And Tolliver's like, thank you. And I'm like, is that funny? But because he made that joke, he knows what he's doing. So having the principal whip Tolliver later, yeah. What? It, Look, unless we're supposed to, we're meant to hate the principal well, more. Well, we, we, this it is does so make bad. us hate it's, him more. But that joke of saying that is funny. Is funny. It, I I agree. Is there subtext of the principal being a racist? None whatsoever. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Okay, let's go out on a limb here and say that. Now the principal's crazy, he's a racist. Right. So anyway, Woody gets involved and he shows up and he's like, ha ha, I look insane. Yeah, that's terrible. It's horrible, this costume. <laughs> it's very reminiscent of the hawk owl costume though. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, but also specifically, close. you know, it's, it's more specific to, be, to being, you know, Woody. It, it has a slightly poked nose. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. And he doesn't have the bug eyes. No. Yeah, he does. He's got the big thing. He's got goggles. But it does he's got like goggles, magnified. but they're not like, no, yeah. yeah. His yeah, eyes don't look up. crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, he's not like trained or anything. Nope. So like, what's he going to oh, yeah, do? No, he, well, he's going to get his ass kicked by the principals. What are you going to do? Yeah. Which of course he does. And uh, so Tolliver's like, so please tell me that like, you're not my backup. Huh. Like you called someone on your way over here, like the Ultimates or Shield or or the or, police or the police. For, uh, and he, anyone. And, and, and Hanks, of course, like those are all really great ideas. That that would have been a really good call. But I I did bring backup. I promise. And he's like, it better not be that bird. <laughs> <laughs> and the owl shows up. <laughs> Ralph, <laughs> scream! <laughs> we did the switcheroo. <laughs> You should do it where it does that hot, hot Harry Potter thing, where it just crashes into the floor. Yeah, just bam. Oh, that old fucking owl. <laughs> it just dies. And then Hawk Owl appears, and he's like, if you touch that child, I will kill you. Oh. And he's like, and he, for and some he makes reason. It back for extra credit, eh? <laughs> that gesture. What is that? Like, because it was already, it was, it was almost cool when he appears as a silhouette out of the shadows, and then his eyes light up. Yeah. And then he goes, Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> like he's the greatest showman. I'm like, what? What is are this? you doing? I mean, it's, it is. I think it's supposed to be like a come on kind yeah. of move. But he looks like he's like, ta da! <laughs> it's a hundred percent a ta da move. <laughs> it's a ta da. <laughs> it wants to be come on is ta da. So he's like, awesome. remember, Dude, he just got out of a co coma too. But, and the principal's like, you were in a coma. <laughs> You're not beating anybody. You're not killing anybody today. Yeah. And he's like, I bet you barely get to hold yourself up with all that crap on your body. And he's Doesn't like, Miss Gale have a gun? She had a gun before. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't come up. Oh, they try to shoot uh, oh, yeah, Hank no. and he dodges the bullet. Because well, he's, so, he's so agile. Yeah. We've already seen he can dodge a sword. It means he can definitely dodge a bullet. <laughs> Oh yeah, because they go at the same speed. <laughs> you can dodge a sword. You can, you dodge, can a dodge a gun. <laughs> but, oh wait, no, come up does not endorse this. <laughs> so uh, he's like, "No, I do have my chauffeur though, and he's gonna kick your ass." And uh, ah, you know, so Lee's there. Too. He's not in a coma. Nope. And Toller's like, "Please tell me." That like anyone with a gun or police training is here. Like it's just people I know. Right. And then the uh, you know Britney Spears shows up and she hits Lee in the back of the head with like a before he could do like anything. A bat. And so he's down and oh he's like, oh. God. And then uh, Hawk Owl calls to Ralph and just six the bird onto the principal and says like, you know, take his face. <laughs> so the bird just 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 takes his face off. I want you to take his face. <laughs> Off. Oh. Yeah, he eyes, the nose, nose, the lips. It's coming off. Oh, it's coming off. <laughs> it does, I guess. I mean, we don't really get any closure on the principal except that, like, he's it's okay. Probably, neither do his wounds. Right? No, he, it's just 
Just mauled to death by an owl, I guess. Yeah, his, his command is Ralph hurt him. Yeah. Which, I mean, you know. I want him to feel pain. Yes, <laughs> give him all the pain in his face. So then they carry uh, Tolliver out of there. So they just win by birds. Birds the, win the, the owls win the day. Yeah. Yeah. Because owls attack the... Oh, and then more, more owls show up and they, yeah. ta- they take out the... the rest of the... Oh, because... Okay. The, the, oh, I forgot to mention the principal is also aided by a loyal army of ne'er-do-wells. Like the right. kids that don't want to die fall in line with the right. principal. So like the kids who beat up Hank team up with of the principal. Of course. And so right. they also get their faces ripped off by birds. Right. Jack also reveals that he did call the cops. Oh, yeah, no, they're, they're on the way. He said, I called them 30 seconds ago. And I'm like, mm. there's no effing way that... This all happened. This all in happened 30 in 30 seconds. seconds. Like, you called them 30 minutes ago. <laughs> and uh, because no one believed you, they took their sweet time getting there. So we go back to the Danner Manor where everybody's, like, wrapping things up in a neat little package. Right. Uh, and essentially... Uh, you know, oh, fa- even Father Joe is there, and uh, you know he's like, "This is he's a terrible idea." He's part of the idea. gang now. Hmm? He's part of the gang no, now. No, no, Father Joe's like, "I want to put a kibosh in this whole hawk uh, owl thing." Okay. I can't tell you, Jack, what to do, but we can definitely assure you that like Hank will not be involved. Mm. And everybody's like, "Yeah, we're not going to do that." No, no, don't worry. Hank's like, "I'm not going to do it either." Uh, you know, uh, Aunt Ruth is like, "I gave away the best years of my life to you, and now I'm going to leave." And she like seems to like maybe she's banging Father Joe. Like they leave arm in arm, and she's wearing a cross around her neck, so maybe she's turned over a new leaf. I don't know. Who cares? No closure, we never know. All we know is she is also like, I've come to love Hank, and I don't want to see him hurt, and if you put on that Woody costume, you're grounded for a month, mister. And Tolliver and Jack are like, oh, now she becomes a mom. Well, well it's, everybody's it's, gonna grow. Everybody everyone's grows, gonna everybody, gonna everybody changes. Turn over a new leaf. This is true, you know, this is, a, this is more growth and character <laughs> development than Ghostbusters. <laughs> Aunt Ruth says something like, uh, you know, I can't stop you from going on your ultimate adventures, but I can do something about Hank. And so they're all like, we're not going to let Hank be Woody. And Hank becomes Woody at the end of the book. Right. Just to hammer the message home. Oh, my God. We're in the middle of Chicago at an old theater where they're playing the Mask of Zorro. And uh, some parents and their young son are leaving the theater where they go into an alley. And they are stopped by a mugger. But then... Not a mugger. It's Joe Chill. Yeah. Joe Chill's here in the book. Well, sure, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so Hawk Owl and Woody uh, spring into action. What do they do? They stick owls you know, on him. We, we, they, they, they jump into an awesome splash page to oh, reveal okay. that uh, this is the new costume. Because Hank had some complaints about like the short pants. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, the pants. So I, I was want thinking, long pants. The I mean, pants was, had too much like skin. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's a you know, Robin homage. But oh, now yeah. it's like the, the modern Robin homage. Right. So, you know, it's, it's cooler. And so there you go. It's, uh, it's uh, the, the whole thing, obviously, it was, uh, it was a... Hank is our protagonist. He was the the, the main character the whole time. Uh, right. Oh. Yeah. The, it's just a, yeah. It's not good. This is a it's lead balloon some, of a book. Yeah. A, I mean, so here's what I will say is that uh, they should just use those birds all the time. Yeah. Right. Just release the birds. Well, the, the birds city. accomplished anything. They they clearly also understand human language. Yeah. So yeah. Just tell them to protect the city at all costs. Yep. And, and uh, we'll just have pictures everywhere of the city. So, like, when you see crime, you come back to us, <laughs> and you break a photo, yeah. we'll know where to go. Wall with <laughs> pictures of every part of the city the birds go they, up. They and... just smash into the... <laughs> ah, we're needed at the library. Yeah. <laughs> they, no, they make a like big a... grid of glass <laughs> with, like, some pictures. There's, like, sensors they just and shatter stuff. shatter through the glasses. <laughs> Yeah, they have like computers. Yeah. So when the bird like selects the picture, the computer like goes to a map and like do do do. There's a train station. <laughs> it's like, why couldn't you just put trackers on the birds so you know where they go? Because it's only 2002. The technology isn't good enough yet. <laughs> trackers. That's ridiculous. That's silly. Well, that why do we need trackers when we have the bird photo system? We have the birds. <laughs> Nature has created a Compass foolproof system for us. And look, these birds are so smart. They're accurate 75 percent of the time. <laughs> okay, so like and. <laughs> They're birds. It can't trace back to us. Because we are essentially domestic terrorists at this point. Hey, look at all these birds in the air. It's going true. that way. <laughs> birds are untraceable. And those are owls. It's not like they're geese or pigeons or something where it's like, we could just ignore that. Like, that's that's suspicious. But Duncan Figredo's uh, art is great. I, I love yeah, his art. Looks pretty good. I remember seeing it for the first time in Chasing Dogma and going like, this is awesome. And then never really seeing it anywhere else. And then finding out that it was in Ultimate Adventures <laughs> and being like, Okay, well, at least I'll enjoy 
the work. <laughs> now, I'm sure there's like a million copies of this somewhere. There so like you can be. probably get them. I mean, you can get single issues of it. You can get it in trade. They made a whole bunch of them to try and get you to fall for it. But, uh, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, no. No. Uh, what do you do? What, what story could you possibly you tell after, after this? this? I mean, you do Hawk Owl Returns. You do like a Dark Future where it's like a parody of the Dark Knight Returns. I mean, that's like the, that's like the first thing you do, right? Yeah. It's like a, a dark future Elseworlds-esque story about like Hawk Owl, you get a girl Woody in there or something, you know, you, and you make it the dark future. I don't know. I, I mean, like, I think that if it was ever going to happen, it's time has already come oh, and gone. Oh yeah, no, there's no way. I mean, it, it, I don't think that the time was right for this. You know, like, this shouldn't exist. This is an anomaly. It's like we reached into another reality and pulled out a comic book mm. from a time that shouldn't be. <laughs> You know, because and it's all because, like, for whatever reason, Joe Casada like must have thought Ron Zimmer was hilarious on his morning commute, yeah, and was like this guy and championed him, and also was in a dick measuring contest with Peter David on the internet. Like, it was just all this perfect storm of bullshit and ego that mm -hmm. birthed this book that no one asked for, that no one remembers, that means nothing, that is like it's it's a reasonable. Batman parody, like, okay, so mm -hmm. I, I, if I can give it any marks, I can say there's a million and nine Superman parodies slash subversions. You know, here's, here's another take on Superman in the modern era. And there are a few Batman ones, especially mm. pure one-to-one, -one, like here's a Batman concept. Right. Uh, it's set against the Marvel Universe in the most superficial ways. It's not like it's like a definitively, this is, like, this is Marvel's Batman. I mean, it, it literally is. Right. This is literally Marvel's Batman, but only in the most superficial capacity. It is not like the way that you do Superman in the Marvel Universe. There are multiple right. Marvel Superman, yeah. where it's like, this is what would happen if Superman existed in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. This is not close enough to Batman to be that. No, <laughs> and it's also too self-aware for it to accomplish anything of value. Yeah. It's, it is a reasonably followable story. I wouldn't even say it's engaging. Doesn't appear to be. It's. It seems frustrating. Who does this speak to? Right. Who, who reads this book and they're like, oh yes, this. I, I don't, I'm not even convinced that Joe Casada has read it, <laughs> given the right. lack of editorial. He certainly didn't edit it, so there's no not. there's no reason to assume that he did read it. Right. The I mean, all, he wouldn't have had to. I would have assumed <laughs> that the only reason why we would edit it is because he's the only audience for it. Right. Because he's the only one who thought that Ron Zimmerman was worth having on the bullpen. Ron Zimmerman also wrote. The only comic book that features Craven the Hunter's name in a book called Get Craven, <laughs> which is, of course, a subversive take on the Hollywood structure starring one of Craven the Hunter's sons. And it what? sucks on toast. <laughs> it's worse than this. And yet, it's the only Craven the Hunter comic book in existence. Is it in the Ultimate? Universe? Nope. Or? It's in the main Marvel wow. Universe, baby. They had to square that circle at some point. Holy crap. Ultimate Adventures, folks. There you have it. <sighs> that was... I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. I did a lot of research for it. I thought it'd be interesting. <laughs> I mean, it is interesting in it, how well, pointless and stupid it is. Well, yeah. It's you know, entertaining for us. Well, I'm sorry you had to read the it. The story yeah. of the formation of it is more interesting than the yeah. story itself. Yeah, oh, the story of the formation is fascinating. The story itself is like a waste. Well, it's just like, oh, and, and yeah, boring. of course it would have to be lame and stupid. Yeah. The well, tragedy right. is that it looks good. If yeah. It's consistent. If yeah. the characters behave like the characters the entire time, yeah. it might be more Hank, Hank does go through a character arc. Like, yeah, Hank seems Hank like the changes. only worthwhile I get character. It. He grows. Here. Like, Hank grows. Jack is weird. Yeah. He's just weird the whole book. Everyone's weird. Aunt, Aunt, Ruth, weird. Is weird. Aunt Ruth is weird. Aunt Ruth is weird. weird. Yeah. Uh, Tolliver's Daniel? weird. Tolliver? Yeah, Daniel or James. Yep. Yeah. I guess the principal's arc is like fine. Now that I know where it's going, nope. I'm like, okay. It's worse. I it's, mean, it's it's ho it's horrible. It's, it's horrible in every way. But it is also like, okay, I understand that. Yeah. I understand his role in the book. I understand what you were trying to do. I don't understand the rest of it. I'm mm -hmm. like, what? 
What are you? What What is this? Yeah. The, the Lee character. I'm like, what is he even? Right. In the book for? No, he's. I mean, like, and it's, he doesn't do anything. He doesn't do anything. He has no good. He gets motivation. cold cocked at the end. That's it. As a joke. Yeah. He's there to be like a joke in the like second to last page. Yeah. He like, never wh- actually what? does. No, he's it. a joke throughout the entire book. That's why. What well, kind makes of? Motions, yeah. And yeah. they're like, don't you talk to act to me like that? Yeah. <laughs> then they're like, I don't know what to do with you. I yeah. guess we'll knock you out at the end. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That is a whole character. Who's part of the backstory of your main character? Well, yes. one of your main characters. Then he's just there to be a joke the whole time. I know. The main villain is ripped apart by an owl. Yeah. yeah. Which is great. But they did set up the. At least it wasn't like, you forgot one thing, principal. <laughs> the owls. <laughs> and it's just like what? And then the you know the windows smash and all right. the owls. <laughs> he's literally holding a wooden paddle. He goes bat. Nope. I mean, there's a lot of owls. Wait. There's yeah. one owl that attacks him at first. That's true. Yeah, well, he doesn't see it coming. That's true. It comes from above. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we... Yeah. Or, or nothing, because owls attack silently. That's true, yeah. Just... God. Yeah, just... No! <laughs> I mean, they make noise, but they don't do it when they're Not when they're attacking, yeah. Yeah, when no, hunting, when, he scra- when he scratches his face off, you know he's making all kinds of crazy noises. <laughs> but yeah, but they do fly silently. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they have silent feathers. They're, they're engineered by nature to yeah. be silent see, killers. That's the thing. So there you have it. We'll see you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Keep reading. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> the owl not screen is like the scariest thing because it you don't hear it coming, yeah. and then it's like it's like biting you and scratching, and it's not making it. Just you're the one. Who's, the only noise comes from you. <laughs> the only noise you hear is your own screams. <laughs> you only hear, and, and a couple of you just hear the wings, the fluttering of wings. And like it getting more excited, the more the deeper it gets, <laughs> and then more wings. <laughs> yes, and then the rest of the owls descend on you. Maybe they all make the noises, but the one owl, the main owl, silent the whole time, making unbroken eye contact. Oh no! All right. Well. <laughs>